All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number 21 with Mod Arcane. Or gosh, I already got I already I already got it wrong. Mod Husky. <laughs> welcome Mod Husky. I I knew I'd get this wrong. I was like practicing for like the past you know, hour or so getting it right, but well, I still butchered it. But Mod Husky, absolute pleasure to have you on. I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this all week. Uh how are you doing? Yeah, um I'm really good. Uh as, as I said to you uh, before, like back and call of a six month old German shepherd keeps life interesting, but you know, I suppose better than life being boring, right? <laughs> yeah. And you just got back from work, right? I mean, I don't know. So, so what is it now? Do you work at home uh, or do you like have some sort of like office days at Jagex or what do you do now? No, it's it's completely worked from home, and it's been that way since like March last year. So okay. I mean, I have a I have a, a room set aside that you know I play games in and, and work at the same time. And yeah, apart from that, it's at least saves me needing another car. But you know, <laughs> so so when did you start working at Jagex? Because I'm curious, like, has it basically hit as much time you working at home as it was working at Jagex, like at an actual uh, like office? I was actually talking about this with people um, not long ago. So I started March uh, 2019. Um, so obviously the whole lockdown stuff happened in March last year, and then it is literally just past that. You know, longer in longer working from home than uh, you know, yeah. than working in the office, which is which is crazy because at the time I think it was working on the uh, Sepulcher, right? So that just goes to show how long we've been working from home. So anything from Leagues Two was completely developed from working from home, and then uh combat achievements and and everything i moved on to since it's just yeah <laughs> yeah i so how do you feel because i was asking arcane about it but he started at like right at the pandemic basically so what is the difference i guess you've seen from working at home do you feel like you can still get just as much like done if not maybe even more or like how is the like whole environment changed so it's kind of it's kind of goes two ways. Um, I think productivity was definitely lower for pretty much everyone across the business when we started working from home, and that's just because like there's so many little things from getting used to your own setup to like I, I kind of spoke about this like uh, back when I was interviewing for Jagex and stuff when I was at uni, but to me it really helped the idea that I had to get up out of bed and go to be somewhere for a certain time. If you know what I mean, yeah, right? Yep. You know, got to beat the traffic, and then then you've got to make sure you, le you you get there early enough so you can leave at a reasonable time to get back before the traffic, and you know you've got to count all your travel into that. But it's just a completely different environment, right? You know, my my whole routine, if I didn't have to walk the dogs, would be like you know from getting up to sitting in front of my computer twenty minutes, you know, half an hour later, right? Yeah. So it is just it feels completely different. What I tend to what I've tended to find is there's also a lot more distractions at home. And that's not the the joking, oh, while well, playing video games instead of working, you know, the things people joke about while work from home. But even just little things, like I have the dogs around me now and they might need something or, you know, um, like might get like a, a delivery or something like that. You know, you have to go answer the door and, and, and all these kind of little things that just sort of add up and break up the day in like completely like different ways to work. Um, and then like on top of that, like sometimes when you don't have the things that break it up, sometimes there is nothing to break it up. And I know that sounds sort of contradictory to what I said, but like in the office, it was very routine. Like, you know, you, you have your standard team meetings at like 10, 11 o'clock, whenever they were. And then everyone would go up and go get like a, a, cup, of t a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or something. And we'd chat for 10 minutes before coming back to the desk, which like naturally that's good because you get up and move around and, yeah. you know, and all that sort of stuff. So e almost everything from the daily routine has changed. And I think that, at least now, like you definitely get used to it. Um, I think what I tend to find is my actual hours spent working are less productive, but I tend to st like either start a lot earlier or work a lot later, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, there's no, as I said, mentioned, there's no traffic to rush home for, right? It's just, uh, yeah, I, I could finish fi this bit of logic I'm working on, or I'll just fix this bug, you know? Yeah. And, you know, there's no downside to it because you're so, already home. Like working at home, do you have all the tools to like, because what I've seen and what I've heard is people think that Raids 3 hasn't come out because you're all working at home and you don't have like the tools and the assets to like actually make something crazy like that. Is that is that a hindrance like working at home or is do you still have basically everything like the team still has everything they need? 
it's it, it's interesting. Um, I think the tech wise, like we absolutely do, right? You know, we we're at a stage now where if you needed like extra monitors, if you needed like you know better desks layout or better chairs, like Jagex was more than willing to help you, like you know be as comfortable and have everything you need, like from a tech stance to work from home. And they've obviously worked on improving their systems to allow us to work from home like throughout the last year right i mean before lockdown it was basically it wasn't even a consideration to oh can i work from home oh not really we don't have the things they've going but obviously they were forced to they were forced to get something up and running right and that's only been improved upon um but in terms of like it, it's so hard to say like you know you talk about raids three and stuff the collaboration is very different um you can imagine like going with your 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 colleagues to like a, a nice boardroom and a whiteboard and you're, you're chatting and doing stuff and drawing stuff and all this sort of stuff but you could all be in a room doing that all at the same time but now there's like all these like there's sort of online tools to sort of get around it you know like miro boards and stuff but it just doesn't quite feel the same if you know what yeah. i mean so in a way yes we've got everything we could possibly need to be as productive and as, as we you know as we could be but I don't think there's anything that like replaces the sort of peer-to-peer -peer, like communication and collaboration because ultimately a lot of our messaging is sort of done through online messenger, right? And how many times have you seen somebody, you know, misinterpret what you're trying to say because text is very limited, you know? Yep. Sometimes the points, you know, when you're speaking to each other and, you know, you could you your facial expressions, hand gestures and all this sort of stuff, it, you really do like find that like miscommunication happens a lot less often uh, and obviously happening a lot more often work from home. So... Yeah, it's not as straightforward as, you know, is it perfect? Is it not perfect? I, I I think I'd still rather be in the office, but, yeah, you know. Well, that's cool to hear because, uh, I mean, I, don't, I have no idea what it's like to... I mean, I, I do work from home, but I don't know what, it, what it's like to have moved from, like, a Jagex office and then having to do everything at home. But So, I'm curious. Uh, I actually want to just basically instantly go into the Twitter thread because it relates to kind of what what made you start at Jagex, like what made you like get to this point where now you're working on old school and you've you were playing old school beforehand. So Solo Mission asks, what was your career slash education before joining Jagex and how was the interview process? And then he continues, how or has development brainstorming started for Leagues three? And do you think it'll be hard to top trailblazer as so much as on as or as so much was on offer in that in that league i'm just having a struggle right now oh that, that's such a lot of questions so i mean we'll start starting off from where i yeah. start off from where i came from right uh so i originally did uh two years of chemical engineering upon leaving university which is probably not what people expected to hear um that was long story short i was very good at math physics and chemistry uh, those are the grades I got the best at at school, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick a degree that that utilizes all of those. That makes sense. I'm good at these, and let's pick. The, don't pick your careers that way, right? <laughs> it just doesn't work. Um, what happened was I just didn't do that well. Uh, I barely scraped past my first year. I failed my second year, and it was like, you know, you're coming to those resets. You're maybe having to explain to your parents, hey, yeah, uh, this summer I've got to do some practice these resets. And I mean, I I, I turned around, and I was like, you know, like mom, I know you you've, you've paid for me to go like all the way down to, to Edinburgh to to study, but I don't think I want to do this degree anymore. And she was super supportive. You know, she was like, um, like, honestly, if that's what you want to do, we'll support you with it. So I had a year out working at a Witherspoons, which if anyone like listening is from the UK, that's like the cheapest, most basic like commercial bar like across the UK, basically. <laughs> and it was kind of an eye opener, right? I was like, I don't really want to do this for the rest of my life. But at yeah. this point, I wasn't even playing the game, right? Um, uh, so I look back at what I did at uni and I was like, you know what? While I just scraped a B at computing, I really enjoyed like the programming stuff, right? You know, like we were asked to make an MP3 player as in class and I'd go into the library and like, you know, we only had like play a song and stop the song, but I added pause, volume up, fast forward, rewind, all this stuff, just because I thought it was fun, right? And looking at it like that, it was like, well, you know, why don't I just go into some sort of education with computing, right? Because it just makes so much more sense, like, if I'm just going from fun. And to me, that really just helped because, you know, I, I literally wanted to learn. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The grades yeah. came because I was interesting in the subject matter and wanted to learn. Uh, during my 
uh, second year, I, w- I ended up picking up the game. Um, now, I'd played back, way back in the day, you know, back when we were all kids. And, yeah. Uh, eventually moved over to World of Warcraft, blasphemy, because all my friends <laughs> did. But, you know, the game the game was still a strong part of my, like, you know, first time gaming experience. Yeah. And I heard the old school RuneScape, like, the old school start- server started up, because I'd left not long before EOC had happened, and I was like, oh, that was a game I used to play. And I, I picked it up for a bit, and I was like, you know will this even last it's it's an old school recreation is this just going to be like a fad is it gonna you know is it gonna pass and no one's gonna remember this game like after a while and eventually i i stopped playing for a bit just because you know i made an account i set a few goals eventually got bored and, and quit surprisingly but the one thing that got me interested and came back was actually the iron man game mode um which for those who don't know uh, i've played an iron man for like you know the last few years now um and to me like it almost brings old school RuneScape back to like what traditional MMOs tend to be in terms of like gear. So like our game is so fundamentally like different from anything else because money is like the the it's the biggest and almost most important thing. If you have money, you can probably buy it, right? Whether yeah. that's XP, gear, anything, right? You look at any other game and it's like all those like best in slot like items and raid gear, they're usually like you have to go and get them yourself. So that, that like, captivated me. I was like, that game I love to play and the things that I loved when I played World of Warcraft, like, put that together. Like, the idea of building and working your way up through the tiers and, you know, setting yourself a goal. Like, even just back then, it was like, oh, I'm going to be in rune gear, but eventually I'm going to get Barrows and then Vandos, and that's going to be awesome, right? Yeah. And I just never turned back from the game mode. I thought it was awesome. Got really, really into the into the game and the community then, um, which obviously led to watching all the Q&As and you know watching how awesome the team is and how passionate they are it's just like more so than wanting to work on the game i was like i just want to work with this team this would be awesome so came to my final year of uni after i've been playing for a couple of years now and i'm like you know what? i'm gonna i'm gonna apply for this you know because you're sending out your applications to all these different companies you know um some of them were gaming some of them weren't and i sent out this application and and yeah that was how i got the job it was um it was a long shot but you know, I guess it's kind of not quite how I got the job because I actually I was interviewed. Um, I phone interview. I came down to the office for a face to face visit, and I didn't actually get the job the first time. Um, so funny enough, I, I then went to work for um, six months in the oil and gas industry, just sort of like a graduate software engineer. You know, working for software to support the oil industry, and then about six months into that, it was I noticed that uh, more places had opened up, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to try again. And I, the reason I believe I didn't get it the first time looking back at how I did was I kind of just bombed the practical. Mm. Like, you know, nerves got the best of me. It was like code a rock paper scissors game, but I the way I'd coded it, I was only ever getting rock and paper but never scissors and I was assigning <laughs> the score to the wrong team and all yeah. these sort of like stupid mistakes, right? Um and there was just a better candidate at the time. Uh and then Anyway, I applied the second time around, and I was like, look, you know, the first time I might have been overwhelmed with, oh my god, this is Jagex, and those, the, you know, that's Mod Kieran, I've seen him on stream, and I, I really came in the second time, I was like, I'm just going to get this done, right? I know I can do this, and yeah, I, I did so much better in the practical, um, and ended up getting the job, so. That's awesome. Starting in Scotland, moved down to Cambridge, which, you know, way more expensive area for a job that I, I love, and my, my partner came with me, and yeah, I've been here for that's close to two years now that's like you know a bit longer than probably answer solo mission wanted but that's like the full story of yeah <laughs> that's awesome though because i mean i'm assuming people listening to this at least a few probably have some sort of desire to work at jagex and that's very informative because but i'm curious so on the interview process do they ask if like you've played old school or runescape before like is that like a thing that like they're looking for or do they just kind of take whoever is most talented yeah so i think it comes in two parts right i mean obviously you don't want someone or you might okay hang on so there's a there's definitely a difference between someone who is no game experience whatsoever doesn't even know what old school runescape is right like think like knows absolutely zero about the game but can code right to someone who i know everything about the game i could tell you every stat on every piece of gear and every boss and everything but can't code right (laughs) There's, <laughs> you know, you don't want really probably any of those candidates. I mean, maybe yeah. if you're wanting someone who's amazing at coding, there's like a more specialized role where like maybe they're like a systems person and never like a designer. Like you could probably make that work. But 
it kind of was an element of both. And I definitely got asked, you know, do you play the game? Um, what sort of status are you? What, what sort of stage are you at? And game knowledge, I think, like it really does help with designing stuff, right? Yeah. You know, with, and you with, were like maxed Iron Man. So wait, were you max at the time? Uh, I wasn't actually. Okay. I was about three or four skills <laughs> off max when I okay. started the company, but I was fairly close. And when they asked me, yeah. like, do you play the game and what your current goals are? Um, I think it was basically like, I want to do Zilly to get um, a hilt to do Inferno, right? It was yeah. like basically where my answer was at, right? You know? And they're like, okay, so, okay. You know, you so at that point. And even back then, I look and I'm like, God, I was such a noob back then. But, <laughs> you know, damn, like, I, I always look back at my old self from back then. I'm like, at least I could grind back then. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like, so uh, I know. So this is kind of a weird question, but I've always wondered. So I am not a coder. Like I, I couldn't work at Jagex. Would I love to? Would I love to just spew out my ideas? Absolutely. And get paid for it? Yeah, let's do that. But uh, I'm just curious. Um, has the game felt since working at Jagex almost uh, – not the same anymore, not like that kind of uh, magical sort of game. I know like the more you play, the game starts becoming less, you know, immersive and stuff. It just kind of feels like, okay, this this is the game now. But working on it directly, does it feel now you can almost like kind of see the bugs or like see like, oh, okay, like this is where this is what somebody was working on the other day. And now like, I don't know. I'm just I'm just curious, like, does the game just feel different now? I mean, yeah, it absolutely feels different. I mean, there's lots of little things that you just notice once you realize how like things are coded or even things that you're just like, I wouldn't do that, right? Like one of the ones that stands out to me right now that just annoys me, I've never got around to fix in two years because like it's not high priority, but the Fossil Island Wyverns have their like breath animation is like above the model and not like <laughs> lined up with their mouth. And I'm like, I would never ship that. Like I would, ne I would never do that. Like, you know, but like it's something that could, you know, easily be missed, like, because yeah, yeah, Fossil yeah. Island was a huge update, right, you know, and that sort of thing, right, so I think it changes it, but I think that, like, I've never, it's never got old, like, the idea of working at Jagex, I don't think I've worked a day in two years, like, in terms of, you know, like, the, you know, I love my job so much, yeah. it doesn't feel like I'm working, you know, uh, and I think I'm really, truly blessed that I made a job like that, because I know a lot of people don't end up uh, in positions like that, but there is definitely a part of the game where like it's kind of a different kind of burnout when you're working for the game yeah and it's less about like i'm fed up with my current goals and more god i've, I've my whole day has been consumed with runescape for like eight or nine hours as part of work yeah. do i really want to spend like an extra three hours in the evening uh <laughs> playing it right and yeah. sometimes it's yes but like you know um i think sometimes like i find myself more after working for the game like looking for like other games to play you know whether yeah. that was like you know among us back when it was popular or you know i i, I play dungeons and dragons with my friends every every week uh running a campaign so it's good to like do that and i think it also opens up like i think like if i was only looking at old school runescape or runescape as a whole like i think looking at other places for inspiration just helps you right because yeah. you might go oh that's a really cool idea i wonder if that could work in our game and you, you know you change it and tweak it because it's old school runescape but like you know, I think it's like it's like looking for inspiration in lots of other places, you know. I think that's kind of how Leagues got uh, inspired just by other games. I heard, I've never played Path of Exile, but I, I think that's kind of where the inspiration came from. If Mod Kieran, I think, was the one that was kind of talking about it before uh, the Twisted League. But um, I'm assuming Absol inspiration from other games, yeah, it does a lot. Absolutely, right? And, I mean, Kieran was the person who started leagues if i'm being honest it was his ideation right i think he was just like hey wouldn't it be cool if we reset the old school servers you know like every now and then and just had a leaderboard right and people would find that fun because people love the experience of making a new account and leaderboards but yep. you quickly get to the idea that that would be like boring if it was the same thing you know it it falls into like what dead man had with like you know you follow into the same metas you know the game doesn't change and that idea slowly like evolved into what leagues are right um and i think like solo mission like had some league questions like on his thing yeah. you know he was asking do we think we've peaked with trailblazer um what was it exactly uh let's have a look has development started for leagues three and do we think it'd be hard to drop trailblazer so we had a meeting very recently i think 
it might have been last week it might have been the week before where we were all like hey we've got a bunch of like because our one of our recent ideations it was like we have like a, a themed ideation which is hey we you could still do what you want, but we'd really like you to focus your ideation on this kind of thing, right? And we've had that for, like, PvP. We've had that for, uh, like, Quest 150 or, like, you know, leagues and stuff like that. Like, we generally had these ideation themes. And sometimes people need that to, like, know that, hey, we're looking for something like this. And we'd like to, you know, it gives people, like, oh, now that I'm thinking about uh, leagues, maybe I think of a more specific idea. Because sometimes, like, blank slates are not the best thing to start from. Um, and then every other ideation is like a free one. But the, the most recent one for leagues, we had a bunch of ideas put together. And, and that meeting I was talking about that we had recently was going through all those ideas, right? Were there any that particularly stood out that we liked? Pros and cons of each? Did we Was there something we could use to make a league? And um, touch wood, like I, I, I'm, I'm th we've come out of that with a, a fairly good idea of the direction we want to go for leagues three. Um, it's not like all the details are confirmed and I could pop it in a blog right now, right? Yeah. But well, I'm curious, what do you think on the uh the 2 month time frame that that it usually is? Is that like the sweet spot do you feel or do you feel like it should be longer or shorter? So Just, I guess in your opinion, not the teams. Yeah. Um I think that Trailblazer for example lasted too long and I think Twisted did as well right yeah. there was definitely a notable drop off like oh my god there's a lot of hype two three four weeks in and then you know it's like it peters, peters out right and that's not even from players who stop playing but obviously that's a metric you can use to show it but I played both leagues to the end and I noticed that that was the point where like I stopped being interested in my goals right because I mean it just makes sense right if, even if a goal was to say I'm going to get a Tebow getting a Tebow like week two is would be awesome because you've got six weeks of Tebow left, right? Yep. But getting a Tebow with one week left <laughs> is like next to pointless in like Twistedly because, yeah. you know, it's going to be deleted in two weeks, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I think that if I had re redone Trailblazer, because I think Trailblazer was originally pitched for eight weeks, right? It wasn't, wasn't quite up two months, but eight weeks, close enough. Yeah. And we ended up having 10, right? And the reason for that was we were like, oh, like, you know, eight weeks lands on Christmas. What should we do? um and we ended up deciding to extend it right you know we're like, okay we'll let people play over the christmas break that'll be good you know like didn't think much about it well we're obviously not going to be in to take all the servers down and do all the all the stuff you know and i think looking back at it i really wish we'd said six weeks instead or seven yeah. weeks because and i think it really does come down to different rules for different leagues you know um trailblazer for example like say trailblazer had like another like a couple of areas you could do i think we'd be talking a completely different story i think you could have had it op open for that length of time but it was really it would have been really hard to estimate ahead of time how ex long players are going to take to consume the content and you know i think it, it's quite funny but i think was it insane wolfie i think it's eight rank eight seven ish on the trailblazer high scores picked desert um and a couple of other areas i can't remember and that player actually ran out of tasks to do, aside from like 25 <laughs> mil rune crafting and the mega rares from Clues. Oh, wow. So he did everything else, though. Basically, yeah. Wow. Um, now, the argument could be, well, you know, Desert was an area that completed very quickly. But like, I think a lot of players were in that position, right? You know, even like I, I picked um, slightly le like slightly more conventional areas, but, you know, not, not the meta areas for sure. And I was still running out of stuff to do. And I think that like... Yeah, six weeks would have been perfect. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to say because obviously players differentiate. Some people would love to go longer, but I yeah, I felt like with leagues two, I didn't play it, so I I can't really have a say in it. But what I noticed was like I would watch it. I got to watch a bunch of streamers, and yeah, it just felt like <clears throat> they would get everything so quick. Like they would get all like their purples at TOB. And then they'd use it at Nightmare and then be like, <laughs> at least the people I saw, like, they'd start using it at Nightmare, like, this is fun. And then they're like, oh, wait, why am I doing Nightmare? Because uh, what's after this, you know? It's like, we already got all my TOB stuff. And, uh, but yeah, like, I don't know what the perfect time frame would be. But it's, yeah. It's hard I, to say. And I think as well, um, I was speaking to Arcane about this. And he played, he played it quite a lot as well. And he got bored around that five, six week mark, right? And at that point, he was ahead of me, right? And... I think looking back at it, it would have felt better for him to have actually beat me, right? Because that was it, it, league should almost be like a race. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got not... this amount of time. 
it's impossible yeah. to do it all, but you know, who can get the most points and who can come up with the best strategy. But when it was 10 weeks, it turned into who could do the most longest boring grinds at the end, right? Like it wasn't fun to do like an extra 200 theater of blood after completion or yeah. 300 in some cases, right? It was just at that point, it was who could put in the most time. Who still has free not... time after Christmas. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Now that's, uh, I could see that. And, and and yeah, so I think, I think that would be a way to go. Um, obviously next league, like, might have more longevity to it but i think we've got a really good understanding of first league was first league had some problems we spent a lot of fixing the early and mid game in in this league because i mean let's be honest that is the most important right yeah. that's that's getting people in it's getting people hooked it's you know if, if your late game is great but people fall off before they get there there was no point investing in that late game yeah. but now we've got a lot of information and data and all this stuff to really help us you know put a bit more focus on the late game it's never going to be the number one priority right but i think we can definitely make it better and you know going on to solo missions other question you know does will it be hard to top top trailblazer i mean i'm potentially worried about that right and i think that i think that the honest truth is trailblazer was the best area locked league and i don't think there is a single area locked league that will top that yeah have you but my, my yeah yeah no sorry go ahead I was just going to say, my question to that would be, well, what if the next league isn't, like, area locked? You know, like, in the same way. Because, like, both were, you know? Yeah. And leagues could be... Leagues, very simply, is we have relics, we have tasks, and we have league points, right? And, you know, points determine how you win, and, and relics help you get there, make choices along the way. You could have so many different things with different rules, and, and you know, I'm excited to see, like, how the idea we've got develops, you know? Yeah based on that because you know does that mean it could be worse than trailblazer perhaps i think trailblazer was like the it, it, it was such a good combo because like the it wasn't even the, the rules themselves but just the ability to pick your dominant combat style made it so much more interesting and replayable yeah, right sure. you know there's a different feel from someone who goes range to run when picks up blowpipe to someone who goes melee to run when and picks up sail door right yeah. like and both would be viable so one of my sort of ideas is, so I I don't know how you guys are going to do group Iron Man. I know a lot of the like hype has completely died down at this point. Um, but I always thought it would be cool is if you guys did a league that introduces the group Iron Man aspect. So you do the league with a group of four people. And, it's, and it, it would almost be like a test run to see how group Iron Man would actually be because it can only just be like a month or two long. And uh, I feel like that would be awesome. I don't know what the other relics and like potentially area locks or whatever you're going to decide to do. But I thought it would be really cool is if you could do like a kind of like a group Iron Man test for a league. And then if there's something extremely game breaking and oversight that could have potentially been released to a group Iron Man in the main game that can all be fixed beforehand. <laughs> I thought I was thought See, cool. It's funny because I, I do love the idea of a group Iron League. I think it has like issues with, you know, if you're just jumping on to play, you know, like say there's like a, a, a pen where you group up with right before you j go into the main world. Right. Yeah. Can you imagine like jumping in like, you know, even like a few days later on a bad time zone and there isn't a group <laughs> to go nobody. with, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it has problems, but like it could ab it would absolutely be fun. Right. Yeah. You know, to do that. And yeah. I think like, I think like it's just the, maybe it's the developer in me that would say we should probably do le like group Iron Man first before doing the league and fix the issues with the system, <laughs> yeah. you know, while there isn't extra layers of complexity. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, ultimately, I, I do think like it would be a great idea to do a league based off groups potentially in the future. Have you thought? But just because. Like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I would say just because I think that's a great idea now though it doesn't mean like. You know, I'll think it's a great idea or the team will think it's a great idea like, yeah. you know, a year or two from now, you know. Yeah. What do you think about group Iron Man? Because I remember you on the stage, you know, <laughs> revealing it and uh, I like everyone was super hype. In fact, I was so hype. I was already trying to decide my team. I was like going over to people like, hey, you want to be on the same team? And then it just slowly has just died down. And uh, some of the people that I even wanted on my team are just not they're not, like they're not even playing anymore. So it's just like oh, like. But uh, yeah, I, I'm just curious. Like, 
well, here's there, it's like a, I guess a multi layered question because Group Iron Man is inevitably going to have so many issues and f- flaws with it, especially regarding like when a team member quits and what happens to their stuff, like their items, you know, and things like that. So we don't need to get into all of that, but I guess what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think, I mean, I feel really bad, right? Because, you know, I I well and truly believed when I went on that stage that we would have a group Iron Man in 2020. And, I mean, spoiler alert for those who don't know, <laughs> we haven't got it. It's not 2020 anymore, right? <laughs> so, I mean, like, I feel bad because, like, people, like, even some people might think, you know, Hus- Mod Husky promised that, right? And, you know, <laughs> you all, single-handedly all I... <laughs> were going to make that for us, yeah. And, you know, it, it didn't happen. Um, I know, like, companies across the board have like this um like thing of like blaming the the pandemic right the the situation and i I can't disagree that it's had it's had an impact on our entire release schedule right yeah we spoke about the start the difficulties of working from home and that only like that only grew because like while like even if the old school team for example got up to grips with everything working really well Clans has dependencies on other teams, right? Like, it requires high scores work. It requires engine work to allow us to do the grouping. It requires, you know, so much more than just that. And ultimately, like, we need to get clans done first um, because clans is our test for getting, making sure the permanent grouping system works, you know, and it's the most basic form of it, right? You know? Um, And clans got delayed, right? And this isn't like... I know people can look and go, well, if you hadn't spent time doing a fishing skill boss, you might have had clans out by now. And and we've worked on both simultaneously, right? We have a team that was doing each one, right? So it was never a case of one or the other. And it really is just, you know, (laughs) unfortunately, things get delayed. You know, the the entirety of clans, whether COVID or not, got delayed. Um, I personally still think the, like, guesstimates that were given... Uh, but RuneFest were maybe a bit too optimistic, right? Yeah. Uh, on top of that, but yeah, it, it's think, not good because yeah, like, you know, every Q and A you get someone asking in chat, <laughs> any update on Group Iron Man? When's Group Iron Man? Because there are people who genuinely are excited for it, and I'm excited for it. I think it's yeah. going to be awesome when it comes out. But yeah, I think it's yeah. good though that you guys have decided to take a step back. It honestly, I, I might be in the minority, but. I personally think the equipment rebalancing, everything you guys have been... By the way, I have a lot of things I want to talk about with equipment rebalancing, but um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think everything everything that has like happened, you guys have been really transparent and really communicative. Like, I just... I want to give a shout out to like all the JMods. You guys do an excellent job. Probably like the best the team's ever been. And I just... Even though, yeah, things aren't coming out on like when we all expected, I think it's a good thing that we're just taking a step back and not doing things too hastily. So that's my opinion on the matter, but I know I don't share the same opinion as most people that you probably see on the Q and A's and stuff. But no, for sure, because there's there's definitely like a a consumer sort of mindset that's very different to us, right? You know, there are people who say we pay you eleven dollars a month. I, I want my content. I want the content that I want that you're not providing for me, yeah. right? And if it's, it doesn't matter what you do, if you're not providing the content that I'm providing, I'm not happy, yeah. right? And, you know, we've got to try and cater to all the people who would like content from us, you know, whether that's uh, PVMers who are right now screaming for a new raid and P- PVPers have been asking for updates, you know, for, for a long time. And when they get them, they just don't seem to hit, you know, because yeah. they get updates. They just don't hit, right? Or they're not what people have asked for. Um or they come with problems, you know, like Revenant Caves and Bounty Hunter and all sorts, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it could be really tough. I mean, uh, like, the team really does pride itself on its transparency, and I almost wish some of the newer devs... Like, I keep saying, like, you know, Twitter sounds like a dangerous and scary place, but honestly, like, it to me, it makes you a better dev to engage in it, right? Like, yeah. Um, so... That, that that's that's my views anyway like anything we ever say like on a, a q a like i've never wa- I, I watched them all as well like because you know i'm curious to know what the rest of my team are saying yeah you know did anything get leaked i should i be aware <laughs> of it you know yeah but i've never heard us lie right we've yep. you know anything that's like oh this will be coming out soon or this will be coming out in this month that is what that person thought at that period in time and sometimes like circumstances outside of control 
you know makes that not happen and that's not that person lying like it's just in hindsight maybe they shouldn't have promised that and it's a, it is such a double-edged sword because people are like 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 let's just say like raid 3 when and i'm like oh yeah yeah like raid 3 will come out next month and people will go oh my god that's awesome raid 3 is coming out next month and then it doesn't right <laughs> because i don't know like a bus hit the developer that was working on it and the player doesn't care right and yeah. you know like it it, it all these like extreme situations like you just shouldn't promise like it, we, this is why like this is why there's a lot of radio silence for a lot like yeah it's it's coming but we're not going to say when because you really shouldn't promise a release date until you're like in the high 90s percent certainty that yeah. you can hit that right and that just means that players go we haven't heard in a while can keep telling them all we can say is it's coming because we don't want to promise and you know set that bar of expectations like yeah. you know you could probably find like half a dozen examples where we have set those expectations you know like even we just spoke about that group iron man announcement right you know yeah i i believed when i said that that it was coming soon you know like that we, we were going to start development on it and i even messaged kieran like hey when you when you're putting a team together for group iron man sign me up get me on there because i want to help make that happen because it's an update that you know i announced and i think it would be awesome and i want yeah. to add you know so so <clears throat> kind of switching gears i want to just say hallowed sepulcher one of the greatest <laughs> skilling updates of all time and yeah there is it's not perfect to everyone's likings and stuff i have a couple gripes but for the most part it is just absolutely just such a good update so kind of want to go into it there's a few questions regarding it um, one of them is from Box Terrier. He asks, what was floor five of Sepulchre originally like? Can you explain why he's asking that? Because <laughs> I, I, I kind of remember that there was, I don't know, you go into it. I want to hear, I want to hear about it. Yeah. So uh, like I'm, I'm, I'm grinning ear to ear right now, right? Like it's, it's the best feeling as a developer when someone says like that content, I, I love that content. And when you're like, I made that, it just makes you happy because oh, you know, yeah. you made other people happy. And I mean, Floor five, I mean, it was kind of a thing I said on Q&As at the time. I was like, God, if you guys think Sepulchre is hard, because people people did. Like, I think, like, Boti, like, quit after two days, right? <laughs> because he just thought it was too hard. And, you know, there's other factors. Like, it, I didn't even realize, because I didn't test it on fixed mode, how bad it is on fixed mode. And, yeah. yeah, that's my bad. And I'll, you know, make sure to test things like this on fixed mode later, because, you know, I can see things well and resizable. But... I think the biggest thing in difficulty uh, wasn't like anything that wouldn't have been solved by now, right? So what people do now would probably be close to that difficulty level, but it was more the the learning curve, if yeah. that makes sense. So one thing I did with the the fires for it was, it was the fire specifically in early play tests, right? Was I was like, so the the, the tier ones are going to have two patterns, the tier th uh, two ones are going to have three patterns, and the tier four ones are going to have four patterns, right? Now, you're like, okay, well, it doesn't matter because people will just use tile markers and, you know, they'll, they'll know when to, to go, right? Yeah. But that had such a big learning curve. And you can imagine, like, you know, you don't have tile markers. You're genuinely trying to look at it. And you're like, wait. So it was this tile, this tile, <laughs> this tile, this tile. And then, like, you're trying to look at it. And you're like, wait, is it on part two of the rotation or part three of the rotation or part four of the rotation <laughs> it, it, it especially when the timer is upon you 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 don't want to stop and look at a rotation yeah. right you're thinking come on time is on and, and and coupled with the fact that i'm not sure if you knew this but the sepulchre originally for like a day like or half a day on release because i thought this would be a great idea it's not um <laughs> it, it it had the idea that the xp you get would uh be greater if you had more time if you did the floor quicker right Okay. But the the problem is that there's like there's already a layer that the slower you do the floor, the less XP you're getting because yeah, obviously, yeah. you know, yeah. that that so you're almost compounding on that, right? <laughs> you're double downing on it to like the extent that like the people who did it really fast are up here and the people who did it like, you know, just barely um, completed it are just w are, are half way the XP. further down. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. So very quickly, I was like, oh, actually, I'm just going to make it a flat rate. And what I did was because people were being a bit worse at it, I actually, like, you know, when you're like, this should be the, the this should give them the same rate, right? I hedged it up by like, like you know, five or 10% per floor. And what that meant was that like, first week we had to nerf it, right? Yeah. <laughs> because it was actually a bit too high. And people were like, oh my God, it's terrible XP. I don't know why you're nerfing it. And I'm like, yeah, but 
you guys haven't figured it out yet, right? And yeah. I've already done the, I've already looked at how fast people are doing them, and I've done the maths based on the completion times, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, for the first week of Sepulchre, if people had been good at it, it would mean like 120k XP an hour, right? Yeah. Which we didn't want, right? Like, yeah. it is it is tough to balance because you're going to get a lot of people that are saying, I, I'm barely getting 50k an hour because they're just bad. But yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to balance it because it actually involves skill. It's not just clicking a rooftop. So. For sure. But yeah, in terms of difficulty, you would have had a lot more, like, a lot more of a harder time figuring out the fire patterns. And on top of that, I think all of the arrows were about one speed faster per floor oh wow so you would have been t like if you couldn't see them on screen anyway like it was it was even faster and this was this was very quickly fixed like and this is something i advocate to almost every developer like play test your content right i sat in sepulcher for like a week when it was finished development just just running it just like i probably put about 80 hours in Damn. over the course of a week and a week or a bit whatever like because i was doing it in my spare time as well and um <laughs> fun story actually i actually got so fed up of trying to use spreadsheets and counting ticks to work at my xp per hour that i did a really hacky like xp per hour overlay uh in the in the main game just because i was like i need something to actually do the math for me while i can just focus on this course right yeah. it's it, it's nowhere near like it couldn't be just oh I, I already hear people oh my god like you know vanilla client can have an xp track it's 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 so hacky and rudimentary right like yeah. it can only track one skill at once it sometimes crashes your client and for like a cycle and all this stuff because you know i just wanted something working um for the purposes of it like um if those could be fixed right but yeah yeah i had to do all that and i you know i was i was timing my own xp per hour and then i was trying to be like okay i i got re i got really good play testing it that i was like i'm just gonna try and make two mistakes per floor and see what like xp per hour i get now you know yeah uh to simulate like a worse player and try and do all these, these things and <laughs> And, you know, when, when yeah. I say I was good at it, like, players have been doing it for, like, eight hours, maybe, before I finished work that day, maybe nine or ten hours. It was, it was you know, quite a long day, as you can imagine, on release, especially because yeah. that, um, what happened on the release of Dartmare with the rollbacks and stuff. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I think I jumped in, and on my second run, I had the world record for Sepulchre. It wasn't fast by today's standards. It was, like, eight minutes 30 or eight minutes 20. I've got a tweet yeah. somewhere about it, right? You all ha you but, had it figured out. You had done 80 hours of it, so. Yeah, exactly. Now, I think it was beaten within an hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I can say I held the world record for, like, that time. Obviously, my <laughs> personal best is even better now, because I went and did the the squirrel grind and the graceful grind afterwards and I just, that stuff. But I just vividly remember Ari Slash just raging at i think it was floor three he just could not get past that long haul i think it's floor three or maybe it's floor four no it's floor three and it was the bane of a lot of people right like yeah. it was that it was the first part where there was a combined trap yep and honestly like sepulcher was so much fun to, to develop like and to come up with what i wanted to do because I, 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 I straight away like said like I want like three primary traps and I was looking around like these are gonna be things that are you know like a fire trap an arrow trap blah blah, blah right yep. a sword trap and then I was like but we need to make them harder so then I came up with the idea of of secondary traps right and these were your teleport tabs uh, tiles on your lightning right yep. these are not going to make them fail but they're just like an extra thing an extra layer right yeah and then I I quickly came up with the idea of what if there were ever two primary traps right <laughs> that was the, that birth to floor three and that, that that like idea of the fires always alternating is like something that you need to learn to do this poker period right because yeah. that happens on floor four and floor five as well um but it was so much fun working on the design and trying to think how would an arrow fire trap work how would a sword fire trap work and the sword fire traps don't work very well i think that's why there's only one of them uh <laughs> but i wanted to have the combination right and yeah and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so something I, don't know. I something I love about the sepulchre is like yeah that that flame sword trap the like the singular one that there is. I'm really glad that everything syncs up, so you're not just <laughs> screwed. Because I remember thinking like there is literally like a three tick window. I think maybe maybe even less where I can actually run past this thing without like getting hit by anything. And I'm glad that it's so. Like, it's got the randomization occasionally, but everything is pretty well synced up, and I really like that. Cause it... I mean, oh God, I hate to be, like, sounding big-headed and pat my own back, but that, that, isn't, that isn't an accident, right? This is those yeah. 80 hours of playtesting I was on about where I'm like, God, I did this perfectly, but I'm sitting here waiting for, like, 
10 server cycles, 10 ticks, yeah? Yep before i have to go that just feels terrible like this is supposed to be fast paced so you play with the pattern a little bit you play with the timings of when it starts compared to like when the floor starts you know um yeah all of this stuff was like trying to get that and it, it does feel really good in fact i think i actually changed that trap slightly on release because if you missed that window you there was actually like you had to you had to wait like a long time yeah. so now there's technically two formations to solve it if you know what i mean like oh yeah is you don't wait this... yeah, yeah yeah i think i I've only done my little bit of Sepulchre, but yeah, I think there is a, a secondary window. Where you can yeah, run. it was so much fun to do. And it, it, it was actually like I, I came up with the base idea for what Sepulchre was in my second interview, right, for Jagex. Oh, wow. Um, so it funny story, right, because I was in an interview with Matt K, Kieran, and Ash, maybe? I can't remember. I know Matt K was there, right? And he, he likes to throw like these random questions, just whatever comes off the top of his head, right? And he just asked me, what would you do for Old School Dreamscape's fifth birthday event? And I'm sitting there like, I haven't done any of the birthday events. I, I don't know. <laughs> what, what, what what do we normally do for birthday events? And in the middle of an interview situation, you're like, I'm like actually panicking. And I'm like, and I was like, I, how do I tell him that birthday events are XP waste? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay uh and he could tell i was struggling and he was like okay um i know birthday event what would you he went what's your least favorite skill right and i was like <sighs> I, I i said i was like you know what I, I i don't really like agility and i said the reason i don't like agility is because it's very it's very much like you do the same thing uh all the way to night and like let's be honest like as even as a player i didn't realize about the diversity of like werewolf and all these other stuff right the skull ball and the, yeah. the things I, I wasn't aware of these at the time so i know players are going to say oh my god there's there's more than rooftops but as a player at the time i was like there's only rooftops right like yeah. when i was doing this interview right and i was like um one thing i would love is if there was a way to get like slightly faster xp rates but like be super more engaged right and yeah. and the idea was for like you know first thing that comes to the head and you're trying to do something was let's have an agility like skill boss right and then I was like thinking on the spot, like how would a skill boss work? And my my brain was like the if you ever done like Crash Bandicoot, like the boulder chasing you, like oh, from yeah, behind yeah, yeah. levels. The dinosaur. My, my <laughs> the dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My idea was like, oh, you're like running with something chasing you, and you've got to do all these obstacles and dodge them and stuff. And it was like it satisfied like Matt K for the interview, and he thought it was was cool. But you know, when it came to like one of my first sets of ideation as a new developer, I'm like. God, that was such a cool idea, but how could I make it work? And there were lots of little things I had to solve. I was like, well, let's be honest. Unless it's a solo player instance, something chasing you doesn't work, yeah. right? Because, I and I was like, I really want you to see other people running around doing it too and it to be more sociable. So I was like, well, realistically, you don't need something chasing you. You just need a timer, right? Yeah. And then I was, I remember sitting down and thinking, and I was like, all you need is like four or five floors. And I was like, if there's four different paths around this square, and, and I was literally drawing it out. And I was like, yeah, this could work. Um, and then when it came to actual like ideation and coming up with a concept, I basically coded a very simple fire trap, right? It was like literally like, you know, the, the placeholder fire burning on the ground. That's like Cerberus or something like that. Yeah. Right. Like the, it was like that. Right. And sometimes it would be there and sometimes it wasn't. And I was like, look, and the player gets through by clicking through, like waiting for the fire to go and going. And then, you know, like, and look like they can't run over it. Like they can't just look, do the, the, you know two tile run over and, and dodge it right and everyone seemed to love it and i was like you know i said at the time this could be um this could be anything this could be themed in a pyramid this could be themed like something like a, an old crypt for, like for dark and stuff and at the time we knew that like you know we wanted to do like sins of the father and, and what became dark mayor so we also knew players wanted dark graceful right because yep. you know that had been circulating for a while so it just seemed like yeah that content could fit the requirement we've already got a reward that works for it let's let's go for it and they they put me on that team and told me to make the sepulcher happen and and i did <laughs> it's great i now what i want <clears throat> i've talked to some previous guests on the save cast i want the same sort of uh skill-based fast-paced rooms in raids three i know i know uh, like <laughs> but uh, what i want it to be is just like quick like you know how theater of blood you just run to the next room mm -hmm. I, I don't know what your guys plans are for raids three how it's going to be if it's going to be a little bit of skilling involved or anything, but I think a little puzzle hallway into the next room would be just amazing. And then like a pyramid, so like 
theme or something. And he, honestly, I think that boulder, although it wouldn't really work at Sepulchre for like the reasons you just said, I think a boulder when you have like a raids team could be really cool, like just running at you. And if you fail a trap, you basically die to the boulder. You get squished, you know? And uh, I don't know. I, I just have like all these <laughs> ideations of like what could be so cool for raids three. Again, a lot of ideas sound great. And then you really think about it and you play through it and you're like, okay, that doesn't actually work. That actually like still sounds pretty cool though. And you're, you're absolutely right. The, the boulder that I was worried about not working in a multiplayer because like it might be at different places for different people and you might see other people get run over. It doesn't matter when it's your entire raid team. You're absolutely yep. right. You know? So yeah, I think, I think that could work. And I mean, I wasn't stupid when I, when I coded the sepulcher, it's a very modular system. I mean, it's the like, it, it would be very easy to pull that logic and, and apply it somewhere else theoretically. Uh, so yeah, I, I I don't know what's going to be in Raids Three, but you got me on board with thinking that's a cool idea, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's just and that that's the the coolest thing about Sepulchre. It's, it's just fast pace. It's just fun, and there's no like sitting around or anything. Like I think implementing that in other areas of the game is really cool. Instead of just click boss, click your prayers. Like you have some sort of like agility traps. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, like, so it's like has that a little bit, right? Yeah. You know, and I think the part of what I did was like, you know, what it was roughly around the same time I was doing Sepulchre that I was learning so it's like, and I mean, I don't mean like learning how to do the fight, but like, you know, the idea about like these L movements and these diagonals, because like, if you don't need to learn, know those to do any piece of content in our game, but like, even from anything like Corrupted Gauntlet, if you understand how the player like pathing algorithm works, there's so many little advantages and there was a little part of me that was like i kind of want people who do the sepulchre to like learn this without like super realizing that they're learning it right yeah um and, and i think it does that fairly well um that that was always the goal because like there's little things like the i mean that's how the arrow traps work essentially you want to do your last l movement like once and then keep going do you know what i mean um without like losing any movement time yeah. and Honestly, it's like, it's just something that like helps people, I guess, like understand, you know, because there's a corrupted gauntlet. It, it's, it's all like the amount of times I've died in corrupted gauntlet because I didn't like you click and your character runs all the way along dangerous tile <laughs> yeah. because or you, you click backward and you run straight into the flame because the, the tick just hits you with all the flames at once because you run immediately back, even though you thought you were moving diagonally. But yeah. 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 So. Yeah, yeah that was that was the thing. I think yeah, I I could just go on for hours about what I think raids three things would be cool, but that little boulder mechanic with the soda seg maze and the boulders getting faster, so you really gotta know your L movements, I think would be just so awesome. Because I love the soda seg maze and I hear a lot of people just that's their favorite part of that room, is just the little quick you know, L movements into like the fight again. I think it's just cool. Yeah. yeah. Every time I do that room, I'm like, "Come on, let's see if I can do a tick perfect maze." Yeah, and like, exactly. Leap. And like, and you know, there's a little part of me that's like, "I hope this doesn't kill everyone else who's not ready for me to be like <laughs> trying to do it." But at the you same know? time, you're like, "I don't really care." <laughs> I just want to send uh, it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Like, this stuff could be applied to Rage Three, and I think it comes down to do like the developers that work on it. Do they want it to be more like chambers or more like theater of blood or maybe it's a bit of both right because you know chambers has those little like skilling breaks between bosses you know and yep. even if you took away the randomness you could still have that i mean like challenge mode literally has that right yeah um and i think there's an interesting like you know we've now got two raids to look at when it comes to raids three and i think there's a lot of good things from each of them i think there's a lot of bad things from each of them too you know um the like PVMer in me loves the top death system, right? The idea that it's not just free and you come back. But I'm also aware that that's like one of the reasons Chambers of Zarek is so popular, right? And it's so easy for people to get into because yeah. you, know, you died and yeah, you just lost a bunch of personal points, but you know, you you, you feel like it was, you, you feel like you could just get straight back in and you know your team. So there's pros and cons to that. There's, yeah. I think regardless, I, I wish Chambers was dangerous for hardcores. And I, yeah. I don't imagine us going back on that with something like Raids 3 um but honestly like you know I, there's so many little things to learn from yeah um and it's just cool because i feel like you guys are all just improving uh and you know what can be really good for the next piece of content and mm -hmm. a, a little shout out i want to stay on the there's there's a question from iron gvsu here but 
Uh, I really like Temporos. I I'm not doing the content because it doesn't actually like help me progress in my current goals. But honestly, that is some of the most balanced, uh, enjoyable pieces of content that I've seen a lot of people just enjoy. And you guys did a great job with it. Just it's perfectly balanced. It doesn't just make. It's not like this is now fishing how Winter Todd was, where it's like, oh, Winter Todd is now just fire making. That is the skill. But you've made it so like rewards benefit other forms of fishing methods and stuff so i can see uh, just I, improvements with you know i i actually really like it so much and there was there's little bits of like because i wasn't working on that project but i was involved in some of the play tests right yeah. you know they were like hey we want to get a group of like you know eight to ten people and there was even some more focused ones like hey we want people who are really good at the game you know and not that there's like a huge skill component to temporos but you know sometimes it helps to have more focused feedback groups anyway um I I personally love that the jumping fish mechanic was one that I suggested, but I'm like, God, you're just fishing. Like, you know, you're just fishing. Like there's no, there's nothing. You're just filling up your inventory. And it was like that jumping fish mechanic just adds like such a nice yep. level, level of depth. But there's so many things. I This is the hard part as a dev is content feels different when it's your own account. Right. And part of me was like, oh yeah, this temporal stuff, this is cool. But I start doing it on my own account, but there's just something about like saving up all your rewards yeah that hits different when it's your own account <laughs> yeah. right it's not just a test account that you spawned a crystal harpoon on to do your play testing with and all stuff you know it's like it's like god this actually feels nice i i, I low-key want to make a change to winter todd uh to make it get rewards the same way yeah because uh, I, I don't like that crate system although i know there's like would that be op for ultimate iron man and there's lots of other considerations yeah. like people have the items already <laughs> but like i'm curious to look into it right yeah. uh to think about that but no, I think I think there's something, and and like I really like that. Um, you know, it makes the harp dragon harpoons relevant and the crystal harpoon. You know, yeah, they're both. Was... They both got their like benefits, right? I think one's more for XP, I believe. But even beyond that, they now just have a, a general use in the game. And I know, like, you can talk about like two tick swordfish and stuff, you know. But yeah, like it's such a niche use that, um, like now there's a reason for almost anyone to have one, right? Yeah um and like <laughs> this is like one of those things that's like i didn't even realize until like after it came out and i was like oh i don't have a dragon harpoon i didn't realize i didn't have a dragon harpoon i should probably go get one right <laughs> and, <laughs> and i'm you know going back to worms and doing all this stuff and you know it sets goals for accounts to get that stuff because yeah. you, i'm sure you know what it's like you don't want to be inefficient before you do a, a, a bit of a grind right yeah. i went i went two uh, times the rate on my harpoon so I was just, you know, you know, when you're just struggling, when you're skipping tasks to get worm tasks, it's just like, <laughs> oh, God, I'm skipping necreals and smoke temples just so I can get some worms quickly. Yeah, I, I think we had a similar experience. I wasn't quite two times, but I was just shy of 3000 for mine yeah. after release. And that was like with like five or 600 before that. So, <laughs> yeah, I got my first one from raids and then I turned it into an, an infernal one. And I was like, okay, I really want a crystal harpoon, but I can't revert this infernal <laughs> dragon harpoon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got two swords from raids, so I didn't have the good bad luck, so to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Iron GVSU, uh, I just want to quickly get into it. He just, he says like Sepulchre, some of the best content. And he's curious if you guys are planning on any interesting skilling ideas for like other skills, potentially something or it's like, very engaging have you guys thought about anything that's similar to just revamping a skill almost but encouraging actual skill instead of just clicking so i haven't seen anything like in ideation even right like for something of the same level as sepulcher i mean i've seen skilling ideas right but i haven't seen anything like that but i think sepulcher is a good reference point to um if we want to do something like that in the future but I think most importantly, whatever you do needs to fit the feeling of the skill, right? Like doing Sepulchre, like, I mean, you are you literally feel like you're doing mental agility when you're learning it, right? Yeah. You know, it feels like you, you are training agility. But like, I couldn't imagine a same system of dodging traps making sense for like runecraft. Do you know what I mean? It just, yeah. like, like that's, you could maybe see something with thieving if the goal was to quickly disarm traps, right? Yeah. Um, But I think that like, while there isn't anything, it's definitely a good reference point for things to consider. And sometimes, like, it just takes the... God, I'm saying like and, and all this stuff a lot. And people oh, I use all my filler words. Don't even worry about it. 
Everyone, uh, everyone's got their fillers. <laughs> uh, like and right, and everyone complains about the monkey. And you A's, know, but... you know is my big one, and it's definitely Defy <laughs> Jay's big one as well. We heard it probably three thousand times. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I think that it's it's definitely it kind of just depends what takes like a developer's sort of interest, you know. And, and I mean that like ideation is quite literally that. I mean, you you're in front of a computer and you're thinking what could be a cool idea to add to the game, right? And maybe Sepulcher will inspire another developer. Maybe I'll have another great idea. I mean, let's be honest, right? I mean, my, my idea for it came up from I had a something like a spark of maybe something in an interview and I wanted to see if I could run with it. And it ended up working out really well. Um, it was also a little bit like as I was designing it, I was like, oh, God, say it again. But um, I was very much like reminiscing of Crash Bandicoot. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because that was the original Boulder idea, and I just really wanted to get something that felt like uh, dodging all those traps. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, I, I don't want this whole Sebe cast to be just me spewing out my agendas. I want to get as much <laughs> of the topics as we can out. But you know what would be really cool? So currently, crafting is just blow glass, farm seaweed, mine sand, blow the glass. But you know what's really kind of a shame is that you blow this these light orbs that never get any use. And I thought it would be really cool is if um, that place, I can't even think of the place now. What's that place where the light orbs are from? Uh, Dorgishan. Dorgishan, there we go. I was thinking Keldegram, but that's not it. Um, yeah, so you know how like you fix lamps and stuff? What if the lamps, instead of fire making XP, gave crafting XP? So you're running around fixing these lamps and actually getting like use out of your orbs that just sit in your bank. Again, this is completely <laughs> agenda. No final decisions <laughs> yet, but I'm just saying like there is some potential for uh, interactive crafting instead of just sitting at your bank, blowing the glass and then being done with it and having no use for it. I don't know. I think so, Dorgashen could get a little bit of love. Yeah, I think there's there's kind of, it's kind of multi layered there, right? Because I agree with the premise of I hate that it's just glass. I hate that it has no use, right? Like I I wouldn't mind if it was dragon hide bodies that were in the meta because at least you're alking and at yep. least they theoretically have like a a use because it's armor, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, who really uses light orbs, even if. <laughs> even if they do have a use and you can't even sell um, them either because they're just untradeable so you just exactly yeah. exactly so i hate the idea that you know someone go for 200 mil has like you know like half a million of these or <laughs> even more you know like yeah. of these stupid things that are like not even useful because iron man to me as a game mode is supposed to be you know even if it was just alex that to me is fulfilling the game mode because it turns into alex and you then use that money to fund something else and it feeds back exactly. into itself you know like so i definitely agree with you there whether it's a case of we need like a really active crafting thing with specifically more uses to light orbs, maybe that could fix it. I think I might look more towards is there anything else we could do with crafting to produce something more useful that's the meta? I mean, there's nothing you can do with like with Dragon Hide, for example, at this point, right? It's already pretty damn good for mains. I don't yeah. know if it is the best. Um, I think Black might be close, but to best rates. Sorry, forgive me. I know there's all these main uh listeners and i don't understand the main <laughs> ehp rates so sorry yeah i think it's but... black dehyde though at least thurko was getting mad at me for developing the three tick uh black dehyde crafting where you like <laughs> three tick <laughs> right before it and you can get it like an additional like 15k xp an hour and he's like well my record's gonna be beat so i think it, i think that i think that is like the meta so yeah, I like there isn't anything you can do for that because the the biggest problem is not the actual crafting part of that. It's how long it takes an Iron Man to get it. I mean, when you look at it, and it's like it's it's ballpark seventy ish crafting XP per hide, depending. I think it's something like sixty two, seventy, seventy eight, isn't it? Or yeah, it's the, it's the, uh, the... I think it go yeah, I think it goes up to eighty four for black. I think seventy eight is. Or something like that, right? Yeah, no, you might be right, but I think it's 72 for green. But again, I might be wrong. So, yeah, it goes up like that. And you think about the time it takes to kill a dragon. And, oh, you kill a thousand dragons. And that, that that's a lot. You know, you get your your thousand dragons, like 500k prayer XP on the Chaos Altar. Yeah, something like that. Right? And then you 
you, you end up with 70k crafting XP, right? You see that you see the disparity. <laughs> that, that's not saying, oh, like, like, panic buy all these dragon hide bodies. You know, Mod Husky wants to make dragon hides 500 XP a pop. It's just it, it just shows the issue, right? Is the yeah. time to get them, and Vorkath and stuff like that isn't the answer. Like Vorkath drops too many hides, and you know we could talk about that for for days potentially. But <laughs> you know, yeah. I think it does come down to I'd like crafting to be using something like making something more useful, right? Yeah, for um, sure. And maybe, maybe the answer is moving some of the stuff that was pitched rewarding over to crafting, right? And making making them have a use. I just wish there was more choice. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, th the problem is there isn't competition, right? Um, it isn't a case of it used to be battle staves, but you there isn't a reliable way to get the battle staves themselves, so it comes down to if you want to do the daily stuff sure maybe that works out but but then that revolved around iron man ehp metas needing gold from that source and now they yeah. don't you know so yeah I, I wish there was a reason to say i want to craft this or craft that i mean i got to 92 or 93 just off battle staves right um oh wow you did were, were you buying them at like the, the magic guild and stuff yeah i i i bought at least like 10k <laughs> from Damn. shops themselves and the rest were just the, the daily getting the daily 20 or whatever and i mean you know i i felt i felt good about doing that i mean don't get me wrong charging air orbs was bad and i was like it was annoying and i made all the money but you know there have been changes to iron man meta now where yeah. you know you get money through other ways so yeah you don't even need to as much but no i i completely agree i don't know about the solution of making a crafting activity with that but i can almost see that taking like a mahogany homes esque route, right? Yeah. Where you're going around fixing stuff with crafting instead of construction, you know. Yep. Um, yeah, I just I always found it silly that you get fire making XP to fix a broken lamp. It's kind of like, <laughs> oh, interesting. Like, I guess there's a fire in there because, but isn't it like I don't know if it, they actually run on electricity. I think they do because it's a wire, but like nowhere else has electricity. I think they're all fires. I don't. I don't know what is Dorgashun just like super advanced civilization that has electricity. <laughs> I'm actually really curious now, but yeah, no. There's, I could go into it. We got a ton of topics. I'm gonna uh, just take a quick pee and I'll be right back, and then we'll get into some more topics. Give me one sec. No, that's okay. All right, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this topic uh, is regarding the combat achievements. And Colby Rocket League asks, I'd like to hear some, I'd like to hear about some of the combat achievement tasks, spe specifically where the team looked for inspiration when making tasks and the level of difficulty they wanted to achieve. Basically ramble about combat achievements. I, I'm actually curious as well. So with, with Grandmaster, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, Grandmaster is like, you know, the nerds that can do like speedrun Inferno and stuff. And then it's almost like in my head, I'm just thinking, oh, Elite is Elite for me is going to be like medium for any other form i just i just feel like there has to be a room to grow so that easy through elite is almost just kind of like the basics and then master and grandmaster are tough but yeah what do you uh i guess we can just go into that sure so combat achievements is kind of how to put this so 
with the difficulty of them, the biggest thing was like looking at the bosses themselves. And one, I think the initial design had it as let's say let's take Vorkath, and Vorkath is an elite tier boss, and all the tasks should be elite. And that's not the way we ended up going with it. We've you know got a range of tasks now, where you know Vorkath might have a grandmaster task and a couple of masters and a few elites and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. But the biggest thing we ended up realizing when we came to the system was some of these bosses that reasonably you want to have on the system are going to have requirements that might not be friendly to all accounts. So peers are a great example, you know. Can they fight Vorkath? No, because Dragon Slayer 2 requires quests that give defense XP, right? Yep. And it's it's not a case of saying, oh, well, we have to make sure peers can get complete Grandmaster, and so there's no Vorkath task. No, we're not going to do that. But what we can do is say, what we ask ourselves the question, what difficulty level are we okay with saying peers can complete, right? And the answer we came up with was hard. So we're okay with peers getting to hard, and elite is that level where we stop caring about the your requirements yeah. if that makes sense <laughs> we um, don't care about your opinions anymore peers once we get to it. yeah uh, <laughs> no and i think that's uh, the, i thought that was a great idea you know give you gave them a little bit you know where you didn't really necessarily need to in the first place but that was very kind of you yeah and um, um, what that means is unfortunately there isn't going to be some really difficult thing for peers like obviously we can't have like a one defense inferno like yeah. task in the hard tier for peers right or something like that we can't have a one defense inferno period unless we do some clever hacker like override your defense yeah, and stuff like tough. that right because yeah. <laughs> nobody can complete this tier because you all leveled your defense to two <laughs> but yeah that's that's the general gist so uh, elite is that weird tier where you might see like a thermi task and you're like well thermi isn't hard but you know thermi or like or forecast might just you know there, there might be that that those like Oh, what am I trying to say? Those tasks that just have requirements. I'm trying to remember now, because I'm, I'm now worried if I've said Thermi, but then Thermi actually doesn't have any requirements. I can't remember. Um, yeah, I'm not in sure. Terms of like, but yeah, I know what you mean. Like defense. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, you, you might have a few bosses at like elite tier where you're thinking, this isn't actually an elite task in terms of difficulty in the grand scale. Like if you lined up all the tasks and took an even cross section or something. But I, I don't think that matters too much because really the way the diary should be looked at isn't this task is too easy to be an elite task. What you do is you look at it and say, oh, we want um, this entire culmination of tasks at this tier represents elite. If that makes sense. Yeah, I can see So that. there might be a, f yeah, so there might be a few that are a bit easy and there might be a few that are a bit harder, but ultimately that, that entire tier is there. So in terms of task difficulty, um, I'm not sure if you saw, but I, we went over and revealed the Theater of Blood tasks. Oh, um, all of them? Yeah, uh, oh, on the um, I missed. We it. had a, we had a we had a sneak peek live stream, and okay. what we did was we we actually tried like it was part of the Steam launch where we showed off the combat achievements, the progress, the interfaces, that sort of stuff. And the only tasks we revealed were were Theater of Blood, and I think that gives a general good idea of what we're going with. Um, so Elite is that you know we've got a we we expect most people who would consider themselves a PVMer to be able to do Elite. And that's a really hard group of people. But you're, you're imagining the, the person who's not scared of, like, Chambers of Zarek, yeah. right? And maybe dabbled in Theater of Blood and that sort of thing. And Master is the anything from there up until, like, completion of an Inferno, right? Is, yeah. is where we go with that. Because so Grandmaster is specifically... We, we want these tasks to be generally seen as if you can't beat the Inferno, you can't complete the Grandmaster tier. Because let's just say Grandmaster was... You beat the Inferno, you can't you know, you can do Grandmaster. There are a lot of things more difficult than the Inferno in our game, right? I think Six Jads is probably a good example of that, if I'm being honest. I think the Six Jad challenge might be harder than the Inferno in terms of, like, the mechanical difficulty of that versus Zuck, perhaps. Yeah. It, it might just be more mechanically difficult, and Zuck has a lot more decision-making stuff. And it's a lot longer. There's so much room to, pu to be punished, basically, on any mistake in the Inferno. Yeah. But the real question is, should there be a difficulty limit for, for Grandmaster? And, I mean, this might be spoiler and stuff, but there isn't going to be a task for, say, do the No Pillar Inferno, right? Yeah. Because I think that is just that just feels a bit ridiculous to ask a number of players to do. And as far as difficulty, the biggest one that is quite contentious is speed tasks, right? Yep. 
unless we make it faster than the world record, you're always going to have somebody who says, this is too easy because I've already done it, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's exactly and, how I felt. It, and, like, people were like, oh, this better be harder than the Oblivion Diary. It's like, I mean, you already have your arbitrary diaries. I mean, this this is, like, in the game. This is, like, supposed to be... This is supposed to be a fun thing, not just like ruin my life over completing all these like impossible tasks. Yeah. And don't get me don't get me wrong, because I don't know where we sit at that. But like, I think the Oblivion Diary is a fifty-five minute Inferno, or is it sixty or something like that? I can't remember. It's I think ballpark it's 55, there. Fifty-five. I want to say yeah. because I was saying I think my my suggestion was I think it should be like sub sixty-five or sub sixty for Grandmaster, but you don't need yeah, to leak. So all of these numbers depend on where combat achievement settles for one yeah. <laughs> right um so that's that's a thing to consider but in today's game there's the discussion always goes should it be 65 or 70 and we don't know where we'll sit on that i think right now it's coded in at 65 but that could very much it, that we didn't need to care because you know we know combat achievements is happening right so yeah. there's no point putting the actual number on there but i think that's roughly where we were talking and i, I remember speaking to atticon about this and, and even he thought that was fair and atticon is phenomenal at the inferno yeah. right um it's just that level of difficulty where you say to people hey you need to be pretty good at this you're also going to probably need to have some pretty good gear right and i don't know if a sub 65 inferno absolutely requires a twisted bow or not but i think there is a point of and i had this problem with the um with trailblazer league uh if you remember there was a task for a sub 75 inferno on there and i'm not sure if you were following it that much but that was ridiculously easy for rangers who like world records were closer to 40 minutes right yeah but melayers you had the problem of zook was so that... slow right yep so Meleeers, 75 was actually a pretty reasonable challenge. And Majors was obviously a bit easier than Melee, but you know not as easy as range. Yeah. And you run into that problem when doing all these time tasks of what if we said that, okay, we need to balance this around people not having a Twisted Bow, yeah. uh, right? You run into the problem of, oh, but if you have a Twisted Bow, it's just a free game, right? Yeah, you, that's tough. So it's a really fine line to get. And I think at the end of the day, even if 65 minutes is what we go with and say there's no changes to equipment rebalancing theoretically, right? And they absolutely required a Twisted Bow to complete. And I can already hear, like, you know, there are going to be Iron Men specifically are like, wow, you're saying that I can't do the Grandmaster tier until I get a ridiculous drop from raids and I could just go super dry at and never get, Yeah, you know? Because that's a fair, that is a fair criticism. Um, but... I think it's more about aspirational content. You know, there is still a world where new items could come out in the future that allow you to accomplish that time. Now, there might also be new grandmaster tasks that come out with said content, but I think that's just that, that I think that's a good way to look at it, right? It's that aspirational content and it is something to aim for. If anyone has been burnt out and thinking I'm never going to get a twisted bow and can't be bothered, now they've got a real reason to. Yep. Uh, but I don't think we ever want to go that level with master. And I mean, just looking at some of the tasks, speed tasks are only one factor of combat achievements. They really are. They're not even the most important factor to me because if this was just kill the boss X number of times and kill it at this speed, that's not interesting. I'd rather not even, I'd just rather not do the update at that point. You yeah. Know? Uh, to me, combat achievements is about the super exciting tasks that get you thinking about the game in a different way or make you do a boss in a way that like you haven't done before. And I'm not saying that nobody has done before. It might just be experiencing the efficient way to do the boss but in a smaller scale so if you could and i think that makes combat achievements hit a larger group of people than maybe people realize because people are going to say we don't want combat achievements we want raids three i've already done god wars i don't care about god wars but have you tried to uh like you know i'm trying to think of a good example have you ever considered um doing zilly like with like perfect flicks or like bandos or have you considered you know the the various ways and efficient ways to do like chin tasks for Cree. You yeah. know, and there are people who like, <laughs> I'm going to steal uh, Mod Arcane's term here, but he he calls them Tob Andes, right? <laughs> <laughs> there are people who get into PVM, they do Chambers of Zarek, or maybe they jump into Tob, and that's all they do. Yep. That's all they need to do to make money, yep. right? They, they're they're great at Tob, but have they really truly experienced every part of the game? Yeah, you definitely see how. <laughs> when they <laughs> i just think of like fudge shover when he first uh went to chambers he was a master at tob and then he 
steps into chambers it's just like a train wreck at first and that's what everybody has because they get comfortable with like a certain piece of content same thing with me with inferno you might think oh like i'm i'm good at nightmare which is inherently not even really that tough but it's like i'm not good at the inferno because i just don't spend enough time there so yeah it, diversifying mm -hmm. yourself with a bunch of different content is definitely going to make you just a better player overall so so yeah, and I really think that the amount of people who can truly say I've already mastered all the content is so low that I think combat achievements will have something for everyone. Yeah. Um, it's also part of the reason for it. Was It's a good guide for new players. I know people, oh my god, we don't care about new players because we're people who just want raids 3. But it really is like, uh, the amount of times I've gone onto a stream and you hear the streamer be asked, hey, I'm like 70 to 80 combat level and I have these stats, what boss should I fight? Right, and there's no indication in game of where to go with that yep. because all yeah. the bosses have arbitrary combat levels, and the big best answer that can now be given is, well, start with the combat achievements, work your way through easy, medium, and hard, and when you hit a sticking point, maybe at that point you're like, I should go level my stats, right? Or yep. maybe the diary makes you, as we said, go do Dragon Slayer two because there's a task for Vorkath, and that sets a new goal for those people. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot more to it uh, th that really helps. I, I'm that. I'm really excited about it, especially because it isn't like essential to do it. Like you don't need to do this because um, there's not like Infernal Cape three coming out or like two. You know, like Infernal Cape two is coming <laughs> out where you can't even play the game until you've completed the Grandmaster. I feel like all the perks are very nice, but they're not like essential to an account which i think is like really good the way you guys have yeah it. exactly they're cosmetics they're slight increases to efficiency in some yep. places you know if you god if there are any clue hunters out there you know I maybe they want to get any. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they want to get the things that boost the clue rates right? i gotta give a big shout out to that that's amazing that is an amazing perk i'm surprised that even was like part of you, you, it need to thank, yeah. you need to thank arcane for that because he rewrote how a lot of Clue scrolls are handed out uh, and centralized a lot to make that implementation much nicer. So I'm, I'm, that is the one. <laughs> that is the one like uh, saving grace to like not having a mace by now is like at least I'm being macro efficient by not starting Seracnus until that uh, one in fifty seven instead of one in sixty for an elite clue. <laughs> it's like the one thing is like okay, like you know, being a little bit macro efficient here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'm really, I really hope it hits. Um, looking at the top tasks that we spoke, um, we and uh, showed on stream. I, mean, I don't mind talking about those a little bit. One of the the ideas is uh, my my favorite task, probably in the entire diary, is perfect theater, right? Yeah. So you can imagine there's a task for perfect maiden, perfect bloat, perfect nylocus, perfect so it's egg, and all of these are, are kind of these master level tasks that you can do as with your team as and when. So. Perfect Maiden would be, you know, don't step in the blood and make sure that none of the Nihilocus hit the boss and all that sort of stuff. You know, basically don't make a mistake uh, as a team. And there's one of those for every boss. So Bloat might be don't get hit by the fallen uh, projectiles, don't get hit by the flies, um, th those sorts of things. Uh, Nihilocus would be like, don't attack them with the wrong styles. Arpus is, you know, don't let too many exhumed get in and don't hit get hit by acid and all this all this stuff on top of each other right but perfect theater is that grandmaster level task that says hey you guys as a group need to do all of these in one raid you know is is there a like a team size for it do you have to do it in every team size or do you just choose whatever team size you'd like nope you choose whichever team size which i think adds a lot of interesting dynamics i don't know what the best group sizes are going to be but probably two one... <laughs> i'm assuming i don't know if you want some fifth person just there just accidentally the last part of Verza <laughs> dies or something. But, oh, for sure. So the yeah. more people, the more liabilities. But there's little things like the amount, how the exhumed scale with different people. It might be impossible to prevent more than two exhumed from one of them going at Zarpas with two people. Or it might be very RNG dependent. Oh, true. So there's lots of little things like that true. that make me excited to see what it works out. I'm sure the players will figure it out. They'll be like, Three man is optimal, two man is optimal, four man is optimal, whatever. And I think that's part of the fun yeah. to me. I, I don't need to, as a developer, know what the best method is. I just know it's obviously possible to do it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, all the coding works. And do then there's like a few other... I, On you go. I'm just curious. Like, Do you feel like that perfect uh, TOB will be kind of like... It'll turn people into reset Andes, basically. Like, 
Where it's just <laughs> you're just I mean, that's a good gold sink. If somebody's literally just going for the perfect, do you feel like that's a good thing? Because I've always been curious, like you know, uh when uh CM T O B was just announced kind of like what is the CM gonna be like what what's all gonna be involved and will it just be like resetville where it's like, oh, you got you're not gonna get the dust or whatever it is now so time to reset you know like do you feel like that'll be an issue or do you do you feel like it's just something that you gotta overcome almost the, re- so, the constant resetting i imagine i think it depends and it'll depend on the group size there absolutely could be a group of pvmers that are just going for that they don't care about they've already got so much money they don't care yeah they don't care that they're missing out on a scythe chance they're just going to reset until they get it oh we messed up on bloat reset sure right we can't stop that that's that players will do that yeah. players tend to pick the path of least resistance i'm not sure if you've noticed <laughs> um so if it's quicker and slightly more efficient to reset on failures they'll probably do that yeah. um i think for like uh top hard mode it probably depends on how difficult the time is to hit um i mean there's still an element of if you're at verzik and you just barely miss out on the time you're probably going to finish verzik um, yeah so but I, I do think that I do think it depends how hard the time is. Like I wish challenge mode chambers had a slightly harder time. I think an hour maybe would be yeah. just perfect. But again, that's with the knowledge now. Would I have said an hour on release? The you know dragon hunter lances now exist and exactly. things like this and scythes that didn't exist back then. So and people just getting better at them in general. Yeah. So there is that element of it um but yeah we can't stop the resetting there is an absolute like case that that might be the thing but the the hope is i guess with theater of blood that you know you're probably going to try and aim for perfect theater every time but even if you don't get it each boss still has its own challenge on top of that that's true um there's a challenge for bloat for example that most people eventually get it's a bit rng but it requires you to kill him in two down you know there's a challenge for uh, Verzik that requires you to everyone to make sure that they pop the Nihilicus, right? Or that Nihilicus are only dealt with by popping them, if yeah. that makes sense. Yep. Um, there's a challenge for Zarpus to make sure that you ki- kill him without anyone using ranged or mage. That sort of stuff. So, you know, everyone has to do the melee walking and, and things like this. So, I'm so, here. Oh, so uh, I was just going to say, is there any... Uh task where like you need where it literally says you need to use this sort of gear i'm imagining there's going to be a task where it's saying use this barrow set or something but is there a task where it's going to be like you need an inquisitor's maze or something like crazy no so we spoke about stuff like this and i think when i when i spoke earlier about hey does this time task require a twisted bow maybe but it's probably easier with a twisted bow, but it's also kind of up in the air. Yeah, you know, someone might just be really, 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 really good and do it with a blowpipe or some other item that comes out in the future that might not be quite as good as a twisted bow, but you know, com- like could do the job because it's better than a blowpipe or whatever. You know, that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think we'd ever want to say do it with this gear, especially if it's more expensive. We te- there is a task for Theater of Blood that says do it with only Barrow's weapons, right? So that's still up in the air whether you actually need the battle's armor sets yeah uh, we just require that you use the weapons and there is a theater of blood task that says do it without using a scythe so that specifically says do not use an item but it does not say do use an item so without using okay. a scythe obviously makes it harder yeah but i don't think we'd ever say do it with this this item specifically especially if it's a rare item i mean i could imagine if we said um this isn't a task i'm uh, just saying but you know it, imagine we said like kill this boss with a rubber chicken <laughs> would probably be a fair task to make because everyone can get a rubber chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. Okay. All right. Um, I am going to get flamed if I don't cover at least some. We had like 60 topics. That, this is unheard of for <laughs> uh, a thread. It's usually about like 10. So, um, again, guys, this is not a QA. and I feel like most of <laughs> a lot of the the replies to the thread were a lot of like Q and a, like put this into the game, put this into the game or ideas, but we'll cover them and we'll see what you have to say Husky, because it's a rare opportunity of course, but I'll start from the top. 
Uh, Wizard just asks, any plans for a new secondary for dwarf weed? Thoughts on adding, adding Zami wines to the normal Necreal drop table? Could even replace soft clay. So now he's just kind of going on to things that would be helpful. But is there a plan to uh, add a, another secondary? Uh, short answer, no. There there aren't any plans. Um, even if there were, I probably wouldn't say because it might be a reward for a specific thing. Yeah. But I, I do know that Arcane and I were bemusing about the idea that Guthix rests are very, um, very useful, but really tedious to make. And what if there was a better version that Kajum? We were talking about that in general, and then that conversation went to, oh, make it use dwarf weed. We have so many dwarf <laughs> weeds, but like you know, it's just the fun conversation yeah. of that, you know. Because yeah, you're right. Um, but this problem could also be solved by making wines more available, which you know that's a, that's a whole other thing to with exactly. its own complications. Okay. Spice Mafia asks, has the sailing skill ever been seriously discussed at Jagex? Feels like if we were to get a new skill, it would fit OSR as the best and have the highest chance of passing a poll. Speaking of that, like, do you guys even, do you guys see in the, in the future, in the next, let's say, two years, re-polling a new skill? I think that before we did any sort of polling of a skill, I'd love to see the question first asked and polled. Do you guys want to see a skill? Period. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. In any form. Even Ever. if you could design it yourself from the ground up. You know, yeah. you got to decide it all yourself. Because that that's an important question to ask. Because when it comes to a new skill, you're never going to... Even if, say, uh, say 80% of people wanted a new skill, right? Can you get what is now, whatever that is, 75 over 80? I'm gonna just gonna put a calculator on because I'm not going to do that. Can you get 93%, well, 93.75% of those people who said yes to agree behind one skill? Yeah. Probably not, right? So you're probably looking at closer to you could only ever get a new skill in the game if around about 85 to 90 percent said yes to a skill period. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That makes that makes sense to me. Um, and you're always going to get people who say no, uh, and that could be for a variety of reasons. There could be people who are genuinely maxed and say I know, I don't want to do another skill and remax, and that's the sort of like, um, you know, it's the same reasons about completionist capes and that yeah. sort of stuff you know yeah. um you could get people who just think the old school is what it is with the 23 skills you know like that is the old school that i know and i love and i remember and i never want to see anything added regards to sailing um i mean it has been discussed I, i've certainly been in discussions uh with people like an ideation teams like hey like do you think sailing would work is there anything we could do with it so has it been discussed yes probably by lots of many people and lots of you know subsections of the team at various points um i don't actually know the ins and outs of the sailing skill i'm being honest uh back when that was announced uh as i kind of mentioned i didn't really play until iron man came out and i think that was pitched either around then or before then and yeah. i never actually really caught up with it myself um I think and it was, i definitely didn't yeah i think it was pretty bare boned like initially yeah and the annoying part with the skill i guess it's this is kind of true for any design, but skill being contentious, obviously this is a bigger factor. And it's never a bad thing because it just forces us to be good at our job. But the first pitch has to sell it. And yep. you can't rely on revision two and three. I think warding <laughs> yep. version three was actually in an amazing place. And I think it would have been a really good thing for the game. But people already it. decided. But, yep. People already went, I don't want these battle wards. I'm like, wait, we, we got rid of that version two, yeah. right? Let alone where version three ended up. It's very you know hard I mean? to just get everyone on the same page again and it like after the third revision like you just said yeah so. and all it takes is one content creator to make a video the you know that people watch and go yeah i'm not too sure of this but we'll see where jagex go with it and then that person never ever catches up with us right and they just see the poll and go, oh yeah i remember there was a content creator or something that said they weren't too fun i'm just gonna vote no do you know what i mean and yeah. i i think I spoke to people about this all the time, and you only realize it when you read like all the Q&A questions. There is a surprisingly small amount of people that actually read our blogs, let alone vote in our polls. I mean, you think how many players are in the game, and polls get, what, like 40k votes to like 70k votes? We have hundreds of thousands of players. Yeah. Right? Um, it kind of shows, right? Like, like how few people actually keep up to date with our stuff. So the people who do, you really need to make an effort to make sure that they know everything right yeah. and that you've done the best to to explain everything to those people um and i i do think that the way that you know 
the way that warding three was done was a good way to do it um the initial design um could have had a lot more team input and once we saw the reception to the first input there were a lot more specific sessions with more people and like the feedback sessions were done properly of that so that was a learning process for us in processes i don't want to go too much into the details but you know i felt like there were a, there was a lot more team input that went into this stuff with a lot more people who had um like the knowledge if that makes sense to how to put this it's not knowledge it's for people who like you cover more bases right you yeah. the the design had people who like really understood skilling uh we even got people in from the the runescape 3 team who made great points even if they don't know our game because they've made skills and they've run into these problems we had people um obviously talking about um who knew like the pvm and could give critical information about battle wards and how they would work and how they wouldn't work and why they might not be good for the game and that sort of stuff right all of that in from the start and you really do need those perspectives for something like a skill that touches so much of the game yep like you could you could introduce raids 3 you could do it however you want and there's going to be a bunch of people who will never touch raids 3 because it's not their content yep whether they're a skiller whether they're just low mid level and those people don't care what raids 3 ends up doing but the high level people do so you got to get those on board but a skill nobody can really ignore it right yep. i mean just go look at the turnout for that poll it was huge um whether those people all knew all the information about blog three or not is a separate issue and separate thought but it doesn't really matter because you know yeah it's it's our job to communicate that information to the players it's not the communicator player's job to to keep up to date with everything we do you know what would you want for a new skill like personally is there <sighs> or do you have or do you even want a new skill because i personally I, th I think i would like a new skill and i think bc guppy got me really into the idea of sailing and all the potential it could bring there's so much that would be the most overwhelming just project to work on i can imagine getting all the balances right but in my so, eyes that seems like the best but yeah it depends whether you're asking me as a player as a dev it, it gets really complicated I, I can still answer from all perspectives as a player i'd really love a new skill just generally because um it's more content yeah. right i'm there are a lot of people out there, you know, saying, oh, where's Raids 3? And, you know, I already said I get burned out from the game anyway. Um, you know, I went hard for both leagues and all this. To me, I, I that would just be another thing for me to do and another goal for me to make and another journey for me to enjoy along the way. So yeah. for that reason, I'd love a new skill. Uh, as a developer, I think working on a new skill would be really fun, provided that you got it, like, you, you if it passed the poll. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it'd be a lot of fun to work on it. I think that... that obviously if you work really hard on a skill and it doesn't pass that could be quite not demotivating but like you never like to see your hard work get then you know scrapped yeah. or you know put to the side um so as a developer like i'm like yeah maybe maybe not it depends uh i think it would definitely be fun to do and then i think even just from a, a business side of it i think that a new skill would do a lot for the game yeah for sure it it would be a piece of content that, like I said, because it hits so many players, there would be a lot of people who would potentially come back to try it out because oh, it wouldn't. And there would be so many. I could just imagine all the max players that have burnt out come back to like reclaim yep. their max cape. Almost like you're gonna get so much. Yeah, and and all it takes is giving people a reason to come back, and then they go, oh wow. Since I since I left, you guys have got raids three, and you've got you know temporos, and you've got combat achievements, and you've got oh oh my god, there's more quests, and you know suddenly like you've got that person, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So I think that for terms of a game, it would be really good, um, and I just think like you can't really ignore looking at it, even from someone who's aware of RuneScape but not playing it, like oh old school RuneScape finally releases its first new skill after you know eight or nine years or whatever it ends up being, that gets people's attention. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, from from almost all aspects, I would like to see it. But as for what I want to see, I I don't know. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I quite liked warding, but I agree that a production skill that you just becomes viable isn't good. Almost any mini game I think of could be turned into a skill, right? Kind of like mini dungeoneering does. But then, what's the difference between a mini game and a skill? Um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, what if what if Hallowed Sepulchre gave like a hundred or a thousand times as many? hallowed marks and each hallowed mark was redeemed for one xp and oh we've got the 
you know agility two skill um you can kind of uh, yeah. it's just a reward system and the reward system t ends up being xp instead of a physical object or something the player chases yeah. i mean what's the difference you know i've been um, i've been fully convinced that sailing is the best and the coolest part was us kind of like talking about how sailing could be like how there could be a perfectly designed balanced pvp that involves you shooting another person's boat basically <laughs> and i think it would be cool to just from scratch make an entire new pvp scene and you guys can balance it to the t like you don't have to deal with past metas or anything it's just like you got your can you set up your four dwarf cannons on the side of your boat you can balance <laughs> it and you can you know you can have your player there as well you can hire like little minions to help you out and stuff i just think i think it's just such a cool idea it would be the most intense project of all time i can imagine but there's so much to it it's oh the bc guppy cast i think it was part one we just talked about it we we went on about went on about it for like 45 minutes about all these ideas it was just, oh that's what i would want i don't think anything can top it now in my eyes so in this um in this sense is pvp stand for pirate versus pirate then or <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly i just think it's so cool and uh, there could actually be a legitimate risk. Imagine like you take down their boat and you, they, they've they pimped out their boat. It's like a mahogany boat with gold trim. You just steal all, <laughs> steal their entire boat basically. And like, I don't know. I just think it's, I think there's so much potential to it. The other thing I, I think, I think would be really cool is sort of like a, a merchant sort of aspect to the sailing. And I really, the thing we covered was Valamore, that little island or that little part of Zaya or whatever yeah um i think it would be so cool as if that was locked behind sailing where like you have to build up favor with them through trading and then like then you get access to the city or something like that so you have to use sailing to get there i don't know there's just so many ideas but i just think it's endless i think the thing that excites me the most about sailing is that design could be anything as long as it involves boats <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, it's literally. it's such an it's such an open-ended design. I, I think that all those ideas you've said, they, they sound super interesting to explore. Yeah. Um, just as much as, you know, the islands or whatever themselves from sailing would be fun to explore. And I think that's a thing that I, I I would love to do as part of a skill, but like, it just wouldn't work unless we had such an open-ended poll question. And it was the way that Slayer was done, where they just, they just added the Abyssal Whip, for example. Yeah. That wasn't polled. Nobody <laughs> knew about it. It was like, oh, there's a new skill called Slayer. And, that just happens to be a level 85 creature in the drops the one of the most iconic items of the game that people were selling for like you know 10 mil at the time which was yeah. which is a lot of money back in the day right oh you know? yeah um i, I think so, they went for even more I, I i recall somebody was selling whips for like almost 30 mil and the guy was just basically camping abyssal demons as like one of the only people with 85 slayer at the time just crazy sure. and, amounts of money yeah and i keep playing with that idea that like what if you know what if we introduced a skill that, I mean, here's the, God, just people talk about Rage 3 all the time. Like, what if there was a skill that was like a requirement for a new quest that we'd released and that was tied into the skill in a thematic story making sense, you know, like kind of like how archaeology is done that eventually ends up needing a certain level to uncover a pyramid. That pyramid is Rage 3 right yeah. do you know what i mean like oh, like yeah. you end up you end up tying all together and players are oh my god and oh my god there's the, this is the raid and we never knew about it and oh my god what's actually going to be inside and that level of excitement and amazement and and do you that, feel like you that, can't get that anymore because of the polling system we, we actually can't right and you look at any other game that exists i mean even um God, look, look at like World of Warcraft, like Shadowlands, right? Like players don't know what loot is in those raids or the mechanics of the bosses or even like the intricacies of the new zone. And every, when that comes out, they're like, oh my God, we get to explore this new zone and we get to see all these new quests and interact with all these new NPCs. And like, sure, we kind of have that. You know, we did that with like Soul Wars and we could say, hey, you don't know what NPCs are on here, but it just doesn't have the same weight in our yeah. game, you know? Um, I think there is an element of me that's like, like I love the polling system for involving the community in the decisions of what goes into the game but what i would love to see the polling system move more to and this is this again i have to preface this is so my opinion everything on this thing has been my opinion yeah. but i know people are going to say this is jagex's opinion oh my god husky's leaking or oh i disagree with husky so jagex are shit and yeah all this stuff right uh i got i i have so many stupid ideas all the time that you know <laughs> it doesn't matter you know because 
that, that I, I'd rather come up with a bunch of random crazy ideas and, and have things come from them, you know? Yeah. Um, even if the base idea is bad, but all that, all that prefacing aside, um, I, I'd love to see an idea where polling ends up being, Hey, you know, we'd like to do this content, this content, this content, or this content, which one would you like us to see? And then just leave the dev team up to doing it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and the players are still going to have the excitement of, ooh, I wonder what the dev team are going to do with this, but we don't actually know what's going to be inside it. Um, it requires a huge level of trust, especially from people who've like yep. super figured out the game. You know, like you could you could absolutely imagine a PVM reward that would be busted, and you you need to trust that the devs would understand how to make a weapon that isn't like busted and more yeah. than the Tebow and stuff and all this all these things. And I think the in a polling system like that, you have to phrase it like, hey, we are doing a PVP update here is the five pvp updates and you pick your best one right and those polls always have the other problem well something won by having 25 percent of the vote and the other four things got 75 percent. but that could equally be seen as 75 percent people don't like the update you're about to do <laughs> i think what would but, be cool is like i i i'm a huge fan of that i think uh like for balancing reasons and stuff and just getting input i know you guys would already do your part without it you'd go into the into like little communities and ask them around like what would be good for this but i think uh i can't remember what who suggested it or if it was just you guys in general but these kind of like player councils where you could get like mm -hmm. people that are really dedicated to the game and you could have these little councils where you like sit down and like because i think that would be amazing give you guys a little bit more freedom with updates and not feel like your time's being wasted developing something like 25 percent and then it fails a poll or something so. Yeah, and I think I think that has to be understood by the players. That I mean, and we've got a lot better at this, I think, in recent times. But the idea that we're, if the freedom is given to us to do that, we're also more open to making changes. You know, taking that feedback on after it's been released or whatever. You know, yeah. Um, it needs to go both ways, and I think the the sort of player groups you mentioned are a good way to go about it. I'm even very heavily considering, and I even reached out to Atticon, I believe, and said, hey, um you know uh chambers is eric really well um would you be okay with me running past the um the like ch uh, ch ca times because you seem to have a good idea of where we're aiming based on your recommendation of the inferno what how do you think these would feel yeah and that sort of level because ultimately the players tend to know this stuff really well uh and, and he like I would and then use that to say hey i ran it past someone who's really knowledgeable first then went through the team and got their opinions too and then I'm even considering for combat achievements still, once that's happened and I've spoken to people who are good at theater of blood about theater of blood times and, you know, people are good at chambers, but chambers times, just presenting it to the community, right? Because I ultimately don't care where these speed tasks end up as long as they're a challenge. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Because to me, the bulk of CA is all these super other interesting other things, you know, um, not can someone get one minute faster in the Inferno than someone else? You know, that's, and I guess the, the hope for CA is, if you enjoyed the speedrun task we set for the Inferno, maybe you'll get into speedrunning, you know? Yeah, for um, real. That sort of thing. So I, I, I'm way more open to engaging in the community with that sort of stuff. But that also requires, like, me to sell the rest of the old school Dreamscape team on, hey, this is the approach I think is best for this piece of content, and not for me to just randomly do it and then get in trouble because they're like, why did you leak all this design stuff? Yeah, <laughs> you know? For sure. So it's way more complicated, but this is all super, you know... Yeah, this would be to me really cool if we could do this stuff. Yeah, now I can imagine you have your own. <clears throat> I mean, you probably know better than anybody that like of what could really be good for the game. You literally, this is like your life, you know, developing <laughs> the game. So, I mean, I have a lot of trust in the J mods, and I feel like over the next couple of years, I think our trust in you guys are just gonna increase. And I feel like hopefully it'll get to that point where you guys can have a little bit more freedom. I think you guys already do get a lot of freedom. And the polls are mainly just at this point, at least in my eyes, they just look like they're to get the community involved. And there still is a threshold to pass. But I feel like for the most part, it's just kind of getting our thoughts and stuff involved with you guys, like getting the community involved. I, yeah, I think there's a lot to be gained from it as well. I mean, there isn't a single blog that we put out that doesn't get feedback and changes from you guys. I yep. mean, I, I think some people are like, oh my god, Jagex are proposing this and it, it's stupid and and like six hours later, oh, they're still doing it and they haven't changed it. Like, give us time. Like, you know, we'll probably have a meeting the next day to discuss and, and agree or disagree or maybe it's worded badly, right? Yeah. That, that comes up a lot where the blog 
because a blog will start with a developer who has a design idea that puts it past the team that then puts it on a like has a conversation with a community manager who writes it up and the community manager might misinterpret it because it's like chinese whispers that's that's not like oh like community managers are bad they're they're amazing all our community managers are amazing but you can't get around that idea that information can pass through two or three sets of hands and lose a bit of its meaning yeah. right um so you know that that happens a lot i think the I don't know if it's been updated for Pulse 75, but we definitely spoke a lot about the the way it was worded for CM Mutadel was something like, we're going to just reduce its offensive stats. So that's like, oh, we're nerfing it. Yeah. yeah. And to me, I always understood the original thing in the meeting as, let's remove the variance of its damage range. So like, take 10 off the top and 10 off the bottom, but the average is the same. Yeah. Uh, because it's really swingy when that room can take zero brews or like more brews than you can take in. Yeah. Uh, and then even after com- discussions with the community, I think the the gist of um, I think Mod Light was talking to people. I think the general thing we've settled on is we're going to reduce the that variance on only the big mutadal while she's emerged, submerged, right? Yeah. So there's less chance of both hit splats stacking you out. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so which I think is even better than what I first interpreted it to be, and that's a hopefully a good example of uh, one. A misinterpretation that meant something we didn't actually mean but also hey that also sparked a discussion with the community and we now have something better than we originally had right yeah um so i never want to stop me asking for freedom is never me saying i also don't want to engage the community at all because yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm on this um ramble you know i i clearly want to engage the community yeah so <laughs> um <clears throat> all right brad asks what do you think some intuitive ways are to fix wildy bosses Currently, they have remained unchanged since release, practically, and could use a complete overhaul. Uh, have you thought about what you'd like to see done with these, and if so, what? So, before I ask you, I love the Wildy Bosses as they are. I'm I'm just <laughs> terrified. So, <laughs> the reason I like them so much is because it's not even about, like, you dealing with the bosses anymore. It's just you, you being able to, like, defend yourself when PKers come. And I think... If it was any sort of like counting mechanic or something else, just add, it's adding on too many layers. Do I think that bosses are weird? Like, yeah, absolutely. That you can literally just get them stuck. It's just funny how all three of like the main wildy bosses all have the same sort of mechanic. You just lure them over to like their their very boundary, their like aggro range, and then just make them stall. But I don't know. <laughs> I think it's kind of charming in a way, but. At the same time, I could see an overhaul being warranted. But what do you think? Um, yeah, I think I think it's again like some of these questions. There, there's there's multiple layers to it. First of all, I think they're just not coded very well. It's why you've got these weird safe spots where they reach a range, but then you could still be stood next to them attacking them. And normally, an NPC would attack back, right? There isn't there is nothing stopping an NPC like moving like like and and not attack you back really like. That has to be coded to do that, right? Yeah. In a way, so it's so weird. So as a developer, I really, I really would like to see a rework for part of that. But it, it's more than just the code maintenance side, you know. Because even if something didn't work as intended, and prayer flicking is a great example of that. It could add good gameplay, yeah. and I, I don't think these are good gameplay in terms of how would I put this? If you if you're mostly just AFKing the boss, I think you basically AFK Venonatus and Callisto, but Vetion you don't because you've got like the three step thing, right? Yeah. I mean you can uh, still lure him over to the east side, but yeah, you still have to deal with the Hellhounds and other things like that. So what players I think tend to do, or at least what I do, I could be alone in this, is go AFK almost, right? You know, attack it, or come back in a bit, right? Yeah. And that isn't that's just basically saying you're surrendering yourself to a PvP -er, which I mean Unfortunately, the wilderness being in the state it's in, that's there's not many of those going around uh, to even be a threat. But I, I would quite like there to be something to focus on, even if it wasn't really... It doesn't need to be complex. It doesn't yeah. need to be the next raid thing. But just something to focus on that means you're looking at the screen so you can see a PV come. And I think the biggest thing I would probably what, like to do with the three bosses is like have each of the Revenant weapons be best in slot one of them, but yeah. like worse at the others. I think that might be good. So, you know, you give Thamaron Scepter, like, a bit of love or something, you know. and Just, make, make, good just against... make Callisto not immune to magic, honestly, at that point. But, yeah, I think the... what do you, Actually, now I'm just going to ask. What do you think of the Thamaron Scepter? Do you think that needs a complete overhaul? Because it is actually, like, it's... I mean, it's worse than a Harm Staff. Comparing it to a Harm Staff is kind of... 
you know, price wise isn't that good of a comparison, but the fact that it's not even best in slot in the Wildy is just kind of silly. The thing that just doesn't make sense, because I think this this was all coded before I started there, right, in yeah. design and stuff. So I don't know all the tensions. So I'm not trying to be disrespectful to a developer who did work on it, but I just don't see why it has a use for these ether, but also you cast the spells. I, I don't know why it's not an inbuilt spell. Yeah. That just makes way more sense to me. More like a trident weapon. Um because like that that also matches how the crossbow and theoretically the Vigorous chain mace work. I mean, technically, all melee weapons are, you know, <laughs> click and, and forget, you know, yeah. and have a ch just as a charge system instead. But yeah, it's. I, I'd like to see something like that. But I think that the thing that annoys me as well about the wildy bosses is it's the reason the player has to safe spot them, right? And you try and fight them in the open field, and it is just this. Yeah. It's the concept it's the of bullying test. you with stats, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, Corp is an example of a boss that bullies the player with stats yep. you know it says hey i i i i have big health and big defense and, and big damage and and more than you so i'm gonna beat you and unless you come with teams or things like that right yeah. uh which obviously court being a group boss it gets away with that but that is also the reason for, you know and iron uh, metas being weird right honestly but that's I, how wildy wep or wildy bosses were literally designed as just a massable thing you go with your friends out there this is before i'm assuming before iron men was so prevalent but like or even before Iron Man mode in general, I, I can't remember, but yeah, it was it was meant to be go out with like five of your friends and go mass it. It's just gonna do a bunch of damage to you, and you do damage back, you know. Mm -hmm. Which I think that like I can see that design, but there's also random things like Venonatus can just decide to delete you. <laughs> yeah, with no at any point. At any point. Yeah. At any point, which which might just be the developer having some fun with that, right? <laughs> oh, you're in a group of your friends and you laugh at the one guy who got like deleted by the yeah. stack, right? Um, <laughs> I'd have to find out the thought process to understand. Like, is there something I'm missing? It just doesn't sound like good design to me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. Um, I mean, just yeah. Uh, there was no such uh, thing as hardcore Iron Man either back then, so nobody actually cared. It's like if you died, it's like oh well. And I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing, for example, if there's a boss a hardcore can never solo. I think yeah. that's absolutely fine. I think you just say, hardcores can never solo because this has like a 50% 50, 50 chance to kill you. And <laughs> that could just be fine. And hardcores never fight this boss. Yeah. Um, or they do and but, they just keep remaking until they can get the item, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't think there's necessarily like, we're just changing it because hardcore. But I, I think there is an element of... <laughs> I talk about this a lot, right, uh, in, in, internally and stuff. There's a difference between catering to a game mode and considering. Yeah. Right? Because I've been criticized of that by players. Oh, he only does things and changes things because he's an Iron Man. He wants his life to be easier. Yeah, no. Uh, I think there's a big difference between saying, hey, like, we're going to consider this group when in the design. And maybe it's inconveniences and maybe it's bad for them. And maybe that's okay at least you considered them do you know what i mean yeah. and that happens i think the biggest group that happens with actually is ultimate iron man because there's so many more things that can break their game mode oh, and they yeah. are their established metas um and that's why there tend to be a lot more questions for them and i think that any and every player should be considered whether that's a completionist collectionist iron man uh hardcore iron man uh ultimate iron pk or um or pvp or, or whatever you want to call them um yeah main anything right like there you'd be doing your job badly as a dev if you weren't saying hey how does my piece of content affect anyone that could be doing it yep <laughs> to me that just feels like that's part of the job um but I, yeah I, I would never want to cater to a game mode specifically um but i think there's a big difference between hey if we make this small change it makes it better for this minority of players and has negligible effect on everyone else you know yeah yeah, it's tough. Uh, I can just I can't even imagine because when I when I think of updates, I think of Iron Man. I think of a maxed Iron Man. How is this going to affect the meta? Mm -hmm. But you just don't consider every single thing that it could affect. And uh, and if I'm being honest, I can't consider everything fully from every perspective, right? I can't consider everything from yep. Ultimate Iron Man, and I can't consider everything from a main. But that's why we're a team. Yeah. Right. You know that there are people on the team who who can and and do and 
you know, there are people, other people in the team who don't really think of things as an Iron Man, but, you know, we speak about this like, hey, maybe if you could just, like, run a drop table past me and I'll tell you, like, if it's a bit ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Like, if there's any, like, stupid, like, <laughs> don't want any, like, glory amulets from the archaeologist in the island, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing, right? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, sometimes you got to disrupt the, like, established meta, but, yeah, maybe that was a bit just too easy. But if there was, like, requirements to get to that boss, at that point, it's like, metas are going to be changed. I don't know. Well, I mean, being honest, if it, it, aside from the, ignore the boostable side, right? If Theater of Blood had an Amulet of Glory on the drop table, I don't think anyone would bat an eyelid, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like, yeah. yeah. No, for sure. Okay. Um. Okay, let's see. So... I just missed it. I guess I'll, I'll I'll read this one. This is kind of an interesting little topic. Again, these almost feel like Q&A questions, but we'll give it a, a read. There's currently only one use for the beehives in Sears Village. Could we see some sort of beekeeping hunter method involving <laughs> bees? Building the hive like in the random event, except it gives crafting hunter experience and would take time to harvest like a, like a, like a birdhouse. Cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal this question, okay. right? And I'm going to use it to talk about a bigger topic. Because I think, like, in short to the player who asked this, um, sure, we could. Uh, the biggest place would be why. Yeah. So that I think that you get a lot of Q&A suggestions. You know, oh, this, yeah, okay, this could be good. But, but why, why, why are you doing it, right? Is it a new, is it this, this, this meta is stale and we want to do something to shake it up? Is it a moneymaker? Is it because... And quite often, as comes to places, I know this probably isn't for this beekeeper one, but you see, like, can we get this thing added to this specific thing? And you're like, oh, that seems harmless. Yeah, let's do it. But, oh, that's because it's a region-locked ultimate, like, Iron Man who doesn't have a way to get his thing, I think, yeah. right? Or has a pretty bad trading method in their restrictions, right? Which, you know, I think that when it comes to working out, and I don't work, I'm not part of the production team, and they're the people who decide what updates we do and when and how much art we're going to allocate to this and how much you know time this project gets and all this stuff i'm not part of that right i, I basically get someone to tell hey um you know we'd like you to do this project and i get a little bit of saying i'd rather work on this project over that project and, and things like that you know uh although not all of those needs can be met but the biggest thing i'm trying to get at with these sort of things is why should we do this update over something else yeah do you know what i mean so it could be that like this beekeeper thing could be a cool idea, but there's so many you know, other things. There's so many things that could be better. And it, it's one of those things that I think I want to generally make our, like we tend to, even if we're not on the team that does polls and I'm, I'm not currently that, that, that team is what really, really good at like involving the other teams to give feedback on poll stuff. And one of the things I keep bringing up in these poll questions, cause I've seen us do it in the past and I don't want to do it is, if your answer is sure, why not? My answer, my, my challenge would be, well, give me a reason to do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think that it's the difference between picking a great question over like an okay to good question, right? Um, in terms of the implementation. Um, and I hate to think of the bottom line and this sort of things, but why should Jagex pay someone to go do something that's that's very niche and, and random? And I mean, I, I, I'm trying to remember what the original thing was for the B cut. I'm trying to look it up right now because I didn't feel like I'm, I feel like I'm talking about a bigger issue and not just uh, was it Wood OSRS yeah. Beehive suggestion specifically because I um, duh, duh, duh. building the hive give crafting hunter XP and take time to harvest. So I think the first thing I would say is what resource are they wanting to get from that? Is there a pro is there a current like reason that players might want to be able to get this resource more thoroughly? This sounds like honey if it's a beehive or like honeycomb or something, right? Or yeah. maybe even the bees themselves is something you're harvesting. My first thought for this suggestion is what it, what it, why am I harvesting the thing? Do you know? Is this a is this a passive money maker for mains or for anyone generally? You know like oh this thing is going to be used for this potion like like let's let's, let's talk about dwarf weed. Maybe you, you get honey and you you combine it with dwarf weed and it makes a new potion and, and you can suddenly combine all this together. And yeah. Now you've solved, now you've solved a problem because you made a magic potion plus. So it bridges the gap between people who have an imbued heart and don't have an imbued heart. Um, 
that sort of thing right now now you paint a bigger picture and you're like okay well we want this to be like honey honey might just be a good secondary resource for this right yeah um but i think by itself i'm like gives crafting and hunter xp well it's this just seems like another birdhouse yeah right yeah there's so yeah there's a bunch of uh I mean, they're they're cool ideas. I have my own little cool little things, but again, it comes down to like what is worth the time. And again, like like you said, and, why? And all of this could be spun to be valuable, right? And I'm I'm I just I I I feel bad because I've just literally said, hey, here's a reason not to. But like, even if I play the the other coin and try and make a reason to do it. You go, okay, let's have some interactive uh, beehive construction mini game and turn it into like this this huge player activity, right? Um, where, you know, you're you're building beehives, you're maybe competing against another team or, or it could be you could, it could be all sorts, right? You know? Um You could make it more like a tithe farm kind of thing for XB or, or something, you know? Yeah. Um, and at that point you're like, Okay, I've got an, you, you turn you could spin this into I've got a cool idea for a new way to train a skill that players are going to find fun, right? And maybe you flesh it out a bit more so it's bigger, and that could actually turn into, like, a valuable update. And you'd be like, okay, that, that seems like a pretty good uh, mid-level update. You, you any, Anything like this, you need to kind of say, let's find a target group of players that this is going to impact, and these people are going to get excited, and these people are going to, like, long story short for the bottom line, they're going to keep paying their subscription because <laughs> they want to do this content yeah. or do this content, right? You know? Okay. I hope that kind of makes sense. Yeah, no, <laughs> I know it... it makes perfect sense. That there's probably so many ideas you guys get, and it's just like you gotta, you can't have them all, and you gotta all also understand like why have certain ideas. So, mm -hmm. yep. Okay, Ghost. We're gonna move on from a little topic, but he says he asks, "What was your favorite moment as a player? Drop achievement, etc." So you as an Iron Man. It has to be my, my twisted bow that I got, and for anyone who's salty, I got a I got a twisted bow on uh, twenty one kill count. <laughs> I got mine on mine twenty, in. dude. <laughs> twenty one kill count in a uh, in a duo with the person who was teaching me how to rate, and we were kind of teaching each other. Like he was at like the two hundred to three hundred kill count rate, yeah. so he's not a pro. But, you know, we were like, let's try duos. And we were, you, you're really struggling for duos when no one has a Tebow and you're both yeah. not all that good, right? You know, we both don't know how to, all the strategies and like setting the hand specials and all this stuff, yeah. you know? So we're just, we're just standing either side tanking it. And I think we was quite funny because I had like 49% of the points and he had uh, 51. So it was quite funny that like, you know, I had the 2% less chance to get it or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but that, that was probably the biggest, most exciting moment for me, um, because... Back when raids, uh, again, I preface I was a, pretty much a noob back then. I heard about this Chambers of Zeric that was coming out, all the rewards. And I, they showed them off in a QA, and a and I was like, that bow looks really cool. And I had no context for the power level of this bow. I was like, I really want that bow because it just looks cool, yeah. right? Uh, and, I, and, of course, the fact that I got it. And by that point, obviously, you know, the grind to get the Warhammer and do, doing Zolra, you learn, oh, my God, this bow is actually a beast. And the fact that I got it is like, I, I had that stupid, cringy, like... Um, <laughs> like oh my god oh my god no way oh my god like 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 reaction moment it, and it was it still goes down as like you know um there were a couple of people i played that, that also played the game with um at uni and i came into uni like oh my god, i got a twisted bow yes keep i got a damn twisted bow and you <laughs> and you're always like in the back of your head like you know like oh, i feel really bad for the guy who didn't get it oh you know, yeah so. <laughs> no that's funny but, so was that your first purple yeah, that was, yeah. Um, you, you literally, are, it's like almost the exact situation as me. 20 KC Tebow, we were in just a little trio, and we were all just kind of teaching each other. I had no idea what were happening, and yeah, just the most cringe reaction to it. I'm, I'm just, and, I know exactly how you felt, probably. And I'm going to maybe make you hate me, and other people hate me as well, but <laughs> I, I, I got a second Twisted Bow at 52, and that was my <laughs> second purple. So, And that was with that was in a trio this time. With also the same guy who was in the duo, who I got it from last time, and I felt so bad for these guys because the, the the third person who wasn't in the first time I got it, he was at like you know eight nine hundred kill count, and he was a, like he was a main um the, the my duo partner was an iron, yeah uh, no actually no actually they were all irons I'm completely lying, uh so yeah uh it, it, all three of us were irons I felt I actually felt really bad 
<laughs> right yeah. i was like i don't want this i would rather a dex <laughs> right yeah. i don't i don't need a second twisted bow on this account so i ended up uh dropping it uh over to my main at the time and like splitting it yeah well, i was, nice I was like look i was like look i feel so bad here have the 300 and something mil yeah like whether it's just bond money or, or something i just felt so bad because it that was the complete opposite reaction that was oh no 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 way yeah like, just you, you can't even be happy for it because you just feel so bad you're just like oh god yeah yeah well you're kind of like defy j he pulled two ellies at 140 kc oh i saw that that's yeah. ridiculous that is disgusting i've never seen anybody spoon corp that hard well i'm i'm a, i'm over 500 kc now no sigils so we'll see maybe i'm gonna get the negative luck at corp it's exciting yeah. doing corp. Like, I mean, I'm like almost 900 dry since my last sigil, but like, I guess anything, anything that's not nightmare is actually pretty exciting. I think nightmare was a good update simply because it's made every other piece of content just so <laughs> quick and uh, like literally corp is like quicker than nightmare. And it's just like you're, <laughs> I can get like eight minute kills sometimes. And it's like nightmares sitting there for 20 minutes, including the trip, you know, so yeah yeah for sure i don't I, I don't like that design principle for the record and say oh we're gonna make content so boring that when they get fed up and do something else they're gonna be they're gonna have fun again right no it's um. it's it's honestly it's honestly the fact that i've gone dry and you could go dry anywhere and hate the content but if i had done nightmare and gotten a, a mace on rate or something i probably wouldn't have as you know painful thoughts on the content but just going dry at anything just is going to make it seem more painful. Oh, for sure. I hate demonic gorillas because I got my Zenite at like 1560. Yeah. Uh, for the first one. I didn't oh, complete gosh. it till like That's 2600. Insane. Yeah. And remember back then I was a noob because I was getting it for Zolra. Cause I think Zolra is the, 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 the true teacher of the game, right? It's the first thing that teaches you yep. that, you know, you got to switch your gear and you've only got certain time to do it. And you've got to change your prayers as well and your movement. There's so many extra layers of like what to do. And looking back, I'm like, God, I actually found that difficult. Oh, but, like, it was so then, hard at first. Zora was so hard. But yeah, so, you know, back then I was, you can imagine, like I was getting like eight kill, like demonic gorilla trips. And I was like thinking that was great. And you hear stories of people getting like 30 plus. And you're like, how is that possible? And, you know, like... <laughs> Obviously, I'm way better at the game now, but you know those some of those guff, some of those trips were like me doing demonic gorillas with guffins, right? Yeah. So it wasn't Jeez, even like painful. 1500 normal. It was so <laughs> slow. It was so bad, and I was so just relieved to get that that uh, Zenite because I, I'd actually gone to Zolra. Like I said, screw it. I'm just going to use the recoil rings. Yeah. Uh, and by the time I got my Zenite, I'd already got my crafting level high enough in anguish, so I just made one of those instead. So what's the driest that you've gone in the game? Was it probably Zenites, just rate-wise? Rate-wise, no. And people are going to not believe that. Um, it took me 2,182 baby Krakens for a Trident. She That's almost that 11 times 11. rate. Yeah. <laughs> it, took me, it took me about nine Turial tap uh, skipping. Christ. Which... In terms of rate, is ridiculous. I got three tentacles along the way, and two of them were within eight kills of each other. So you can imagine my like, what the hell is going on here? Um, that that still only took like a weekend, right? Yeah. Of like Turio skipping. You Just know, imagine maybe... that eleven times rate was anything else. That that's the thing that, I, yeah. that I'm so grateful for. Like, um, that could have been my boy Warhammer. That could have that could still be my sigil. Right, that I'm going for. Um, it's ridiculous that that could be a thing. It doesn't make me want to add like a you know pity timer or something. I think it's part of the game, but yeah. it is like playing an Iron Man teaches you that you go dry sometimes. And yep. I think sometimes some mains don't realize that. <laughs> um, nah, you know, I, unless yeah, no, I, I I have a similar thing. I I almost went nine times the rate of an unsired. Not saying my first unsired, but I went almost nine hundred for like just an additional unsired and that i felt like you probably felt the same thing like almost like your account's broken or something like there's there's actually something wrong with the game like it's not giving you the drop because i kept questioning after like 700 like okay there's i must have 
talk to the little like sire dude at the middle or i must have done something wrong my yeah. my brain at the time and this is so yeah. ridiculous now knowing how co the code would have worked <laughs> but like like it was what it was not long after the braces of slaughter had come out like maybe a, a couple months or so and i my in my brain i was like is this, is this new bracelet the problem you know <laughs> <laughs> Should I stop using the bracelet of slaughter? Like, would that actually help me? And yeah, it, it yeah, turns just, out like I, yeah, like delusional. You start list. becoming delusional <laughs> with all these. Like, there there has to be some ritual I can do to get the drop. Start dancing before every kill and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, luck irons out. Uh, we spoke about my twisted bows, but there's that zenite. There was that trident. My, uh, I finished my bludgeon at fourteen hundred KC, which is Oof. I was like seven unsired. So I was like basically like half the rate of unsired. I, I still love the Sire boss, but, you know, uh, I, I love, that goes against what a lot of people say. I think it's a really... I like the thematics. I like the fight has different I phases. Love, I love Sire, too. Um, it's a really complex and, and cool fight compared to, like, you know, people love Sir, but I hate Sir because it's just so, like, the same thing every time, you know? Yeah. Um, and, well, I guess Sire is. But you know what I mean? Like, Sir is just not any layers of complexity. Sir's like, tons of fun too. with a Scythe. Oh, I, I have gone back and tried it, and I, th I think it's a lot more fun with, when you're yeah. destroying it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, what else did I go stupidly dry on just to offset the Tebow? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, I, I'm at, like, 1,500 barrows and still missing three items. <laughs> Damn. So yeah. it's not even, like, one item, which, like, I think 1,560 or something was, or whatever was on the list on the wiki is the average to yeah, finish it. Yeah, something like that. It's... It's like three items missing. So like, yeah, like I've had bad luck and I've had good luck. Uh, obviously, the thing that matters for an iron sometimes is good luck in the good places and bad luck at the places it doesn't matter. Does it matter? I don't have full Darox. Probably not. You know. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Happy Pity asks, "What is Husky's favorite thing about the game?" And alternatively, what made him want to turn one of his favorite hobbies into work? I guess we kind of already covered that. But what is your favorite thing in the game or about it? Um, I don't think I would have answered this question until I started working for it. Uh, but I really enjoy the, the 0.6 uh, second tick system. And I think it... I was thinking about this a lot because you start comparing to like other games and stuff, right? And I had a long history of like raiding um in world of warcraft uh back when i was younger and in no other game are you required to be that precise with your specific coordinate if you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it happens all the time in our game in in other games it's stand in this general area and there's usually a huge amount of but there's so many sort of player invented strategies i mean solo ulm is basically that you have to be on specific tiles and attack in specific windows. And there's so many little things that you play around with the 0.6 second, like the, the tick system, that just make the game so much more complex than so many other games. Because other games are about which, like, all the different calculations with gear, like, beyond the, like, we've got that, but not to the same extent, or, like, talent tree systems and all these other things. But the way the player moves... It just makes the game so much fun to me. Oh, I mean, yeah. I've started, like, when, I, when I'm bored on Slayer tasks, and, like, once you understand and you just feel the tick system. I'm sure you, you, you remember when you didn't and then when you did. Yep. But, like, I'll be, like, killing, like, a, I was killing a random Fossil Island Wyvern the other day, and I'm, like, click, 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 attack, click. And I'm just, like, dancing around <laughs> it just for fun, <laughs> right? And you know you're not losing any DPS, and the, but there's just that, like, satisfaction. It's right. Yeah. And I think that... You know, as a developer, sometimes I'm a little bit like, it would be nice if the developers could, like, do something faster than a, a, a tick sometimes, because, like, I think Nightmare's Charge is the perfect example of one tick was too fast, but two ticks could still, you could go slightly faster, yeah. you know? Like, one and a half tick might be just perfect between the KO potential and the, um, and, uh, um, and being, like, not too difficult, but, you know, if, I, I if, still think I, I love it for what it is, yeah. you know? If Nightmare had been a 4x4, four four, the one tick window would have been perfect. But the fact that you can accidentally be in the middle of it and just not be able to dodge it is... Just, I mean, you you always can anticipate it and be able to dodge it. But the fact that you, you could just unluckily be in the middle, accidentally click just right at the beginning of the next tick, it's just mm -hmm. very unfortunate. And that's one of my rage clips on my stream is the most irritated I ever was at Nightmare. Just the first day just getting swiped so depressing but that was a fun mechanic and it yeah 
Oh, he was. I, I loved watching people get taken out by that that's that swoop or whatever you know that just that stupid it, it, it like honestly if you slow down that animation it literally like to run with like the legs spinning and like arms out behind but but honestly here's an interesting dev maybe you don't find it interesting maybe the viewers don't but we tend not to actually make npcs uh, uh like two by two or four by four anymore some some things like two by two like giants work but the biggest reason is lining up animations um with a oh, two by yeah, two and a true. four by four you don't have a middle coordinate right it's always offset either to one side true so when you're think about uh dragons for example are four by four but the breath is always just slightly off usually um to one side um and that sometimes matters when you're like saying i want this to be in front and in the center of the npc for the sake of an animation and make it look nice so usually it's 1v1 3v3 or 5v5 but i mean you can still kind of make it work at four by four and two by two but it is just easier on the developer yeah um interesting. if it's an odd number you know what I think would have been cool for that dash attack is if um, just animation wise, when it gets to its initial position where it's about to run, it has kind of like a charge up because right now it's just kind of stands there and then it just goes. It would be cool if it kind of like loaded up sort of in a way, like lunged its ar arms back or something like getting ready. But uh, I mean, that's just yeah. a little thing that would have made it more that badass. I think that's absolutely fair. And I think that charge attack is also a good example. I mean, I said my favorite thing is the tick system, but that that goes hand in hand with the tile system. You know, that there is a definitive exact square that the player has stood on. And it's actually the reason why I think that I tend to need rune light for a lot of things for, like, I think I mentioned this on your stream the other day, the NPC, like, outline and hull. Yeah. It really changes how you perceive the Nightmare's charge attack when you can physically see and understand the tiles that the attack hits yep because i think that goes both ways um with with this system that i love so much it becomes very important to be able to see the tiles and some things just aren't telegraphed very well uh when i was looking at uh, abyssal sire feedback and changes that we could look at, into one of the things that came up with was that explosion that he does it doesn't really you don't really know how many tiles it hits apart from trial and error but there's no easy way to do an animation, really, unless you like have like a specific like explosion on the model that goes out bigger than the model, which is really hard for us to do. Um, but like maybe you don't need to telegraph everything to that extent. But it is a like problem slash consideration, you know, with our with our system, you yeah. know. And it is why I do like having the the outline of the creature. Like tile markers are a completely different thing to me. But like just clearly seeing that yeah. this box is where I can attack because some NPCs don't line up well like Zarpus, you know? You wouldn't believe Zarpus is as big as he actually is. <laughs> just looking at no. the model. Nightmare Nightmare's a good example. Um and I think I recall hearing you can't actually ever make an NPC like a one by two or a three by four. They always have to be equal on each side, right? Yeah, that's correct. We can for scenery pieces. So, like, um, you know, wardrobes are quite often one by two. Yeah. Um, that sort of thing. But, yeah, for, for NPCs, we have a size. And we specify one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And we tend not to go really big. Uh, fun fact, the Abyssal Sire tentacles are size nine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> they're just merged into the scenery really well. Wow. Um, I think they're some of the biggest. Uh, we tend not to need the, the bigger sizes. Um mostly because of poly limits so we have like i can't remember how many polys it is but there is actually a limit on how many uh can actually be on the screen before the npc will just disappear i think you kind of see that sometimes and it happened a lot in the, the trailblazer league when it there's like barrage animations um on top of an npc that's already doing an animation you can sometimes see the npc flicker and disappear oh yeah yeah um we've increased it since then it used to happen a lot at kraken i believe back before i started the company work, work for the company but yeah so so obviously we could ask engine to increase it but it is a consideration when you're you're designing an npc is how many polys does it have yeah. and that includes all the invisible ones you can't see that are just used for an animation but are visible as part of their you know idle animations or walking animations so i want to quickly give my uh, just a little topic i little uh i had because I, I know i'll forget if i don't mention it now but um <laughs> that's okay i don't know if you saw i mean i'm assuming you did but the elite clue rate there's a there's something in here about it i can't even find it right now but how the elite clues were um like the third age rate was just 
massively uh uh i guess in or i guess decreased so it went from like one in three thousand to about one in almost six thousand now it, are there any like I know you can't say maybe yet if it's going to happen, but do you think that there will be a change in third age rate for elite clues? I know some people are, are stacking, and since I have you on the cast right now, I guess we could ask, but is there any uh, change for like the elite clue rate for third age that may be happening? Um, I know Madalena replied to it, and she said that you guys would discuss it internally, but... Yeah, I I know it was discussed. Uh, the team generally seemed to look at it in the way that it was probably more like a bug, to be honest. That the rate changed when things were added. Now that makes it makes perfect sense why it happened. If yeah. You can imagine, you know, the the third age table. I don't know what the exact numbers, but if it used to be a one in ten, and we had two items, in the third yeah. age tables a one in twelve. I I there are ways that could have been added that didn't need to do that. So maybe that could have been perceived as a bug and the team seemed to feel like that's a reasonable way to look at it as for if it's going to be changed when it's going to be changed i don't honestly know i know as as you just said modelena was very uh interested in in doing something about it and following it up but you know we're a team with lots of different people yep. that look at different things if if i'm, if I'm honest if i see that modelena's you know interested in going to look into it, i'm probably not going to pay much attention to myself right yeah um and, and that sort of thing um so yeah i I'll, I'll maybe mention that people are stacking and that's stacking is okay but it's bad if you know that ends up amounting to nothing especially yeah. for a long period of time <laughs> yeah. uh so I'll, I'll maybe just send her a message uh at some point tomorrow and just say hey uh because of your thing on twitter people are doing this and if there are no plans it might be you know, a good idea to let people know that there are no plans just as a courtesy thing. But yeah. all I could do is pass on that message as well, right? You know, or yeah, we might just have to get model lane on the cast as well. Just, <laughs> no, this is not about this is not the me passing my agendas. But no, but I've just heard a lot of people because I'm obviously a huge clue fanatic. And it, it just bothers me that there there could be an update where it's like, oh, I could have drastically increased my chance to get third age if I had just stacked and like known. So um, the other thing I just want to ask, and some people have asked, a lot of people are curious if there's anything going to happen to nightmare uh, about drop rates. And I'm, I don't even need to say my opinion. I mean, you know, whatever happens happens, but uh, people are wondering if like, they should even do nightmare now or if like you guys are eventually going to just dramatically increase the drop rates or if there's any plan on that whatsoever do you do you know of anything that's planning on happening to happening to nightmare sure so i'd like to talk a little bit about nightmare anyway um partly because i feel somewhat responsible i was on the team uh that produced the nightmare um and i think one of the biggest issues the nightmare had from a conceptual design point uh, is it tried to do too many things. Um, when you have too big of a target audience and you please too many people, you end up pleasing nobody, is essentially what happened. The goal of the update was to make it really accessible and people could come in and they go and mass it together and there's, you know, be this true old school RuneScape group boss in a way that group bosses have never really existed outside of Corp. And you, you, you make it super accessible. So you... Even though little Jimmy doesn't really have a hope in hell of getting an item, he's going to be excited at the fact that he could just pull a ton of money, right? Yeah. So that was that sounds really good from a conceptual level. Um, and you're thinking about, okay, well, we want really expensive rewards, but, you know, we also want it to have this extra layer of depth for good high-level players. And it probably makes sense that there's, you know, if they're going to be expensive high-level rewards, you end up having, you know, high-level players be part of the target audience. But the truth is, it doesn't really satisfy the low players because the drop rates are so rare in order to be so expensive that they're just not happy because, you know, little Jimmy still wants a hope, you know, <laughs> he doesn't want an impossibility, in, yeah. you know, but at the same time, the high level players have this fight that it wouldn't matter if it took a long time as long as it was interesting, yeah. but they can't because the mechanics are so scripted and so like one-dimensional that it's just not interesting to them 
right? So, so, so to me, you end up in this position where nobody won, in, in my eyes. Nightmare was a, a thing that tried to please two people, but ended up pleasing none of them yeah. in these like ideas of player groups. Now, hopefully the way I explained it makes sense to how it got there. So you could understand the idea of, you know, this group boss, so group, be more inclusive and get in. But if we designed it around just high-level players, I think we would have tried to make the fight more interesting. Despite the longer... Now, the grind is obviously, like, a huge thing. Yeah. It's maybe okay for mains in group sizes of five, but it's kind of slightly inappropriate for people grinding out solo. But maybe that's an okay thing because... Yeah, and I, you know, I agree. It probably actually is an okay thing. I mean, um, that so the Siren's Tome was my biggest mistake ever, right? It was an idea I had that I didn't put a lot of time and effort into because I was working on, you know, Leagues 1 at the time. And I was like, yeah, well, we don't really have magic damage in the offhand. Let's do that. And it was just such a bad thing for so many reasons. Um, you know what? I'm just going to counter it real quick and just say that um, <laughs> I think it was like seen as hor like horrible at the time but in hindsight honestly if that was released in nightmare it would probably be more hours than an arcane and it would actually probably have like it it's just funny that we see it now if the siren storm had actually been come out and it would have been like the same rate as an orb let's say that would <laughs> actually be more rare than almost an ellie so like hours wise oh. <laughs> so it actually probably would have like fit perfectly with like hours but i i understand the devaluation of the arcane was the main thing sure and if i'm being honest i think this the different ways that we look at the content versus the players and that's such a because i kind of try to see it from both i mean obviously I play it does a lot but yeah. people kind of like to me the first thing that has to be true about sort of design perspective is thematically making sense so this is um this is a, a hag that played plagued the sirens and they stole one of their magical tomes and it makes sense but you know could we change that into a shield maybe it just didn't make as much sense to me to come from that yeah. content now to players they don't care right they're like oh make it attached to the arcane and honestly an attachment to the arcane is an interesting concept right um especially for iron players it's kind of what i was going to about nightmare drops being so long there is the idea that an, an iron man putting in hundreds if not thousands of hours to get two really rare drops from two like really long grinds and you would look up to that iron man and go that guy god damn that's impressive do you know what i mean yep and that could be absolutely fine for the iron man game mode because that's not enforced on mains and, you know that but there was a whole what i mean by it being a mistake was one 10 percent was ridiculous right and it was very quickly changed to four percent uh just blame me being a new dev that was being stupid at the time and there's elements as well of the team just didn't like the the team could have given me more feedback on that as well if you know what i mean yeah but all this aside and, and that sort of stuff the thing i hate about it the most was was how the entire conversation happened because i was focused on raids one at the time i uh, not raids one leagues one at the time and i was kind of like okay well this was my idea so i should probably engage with it and one of the difficult things you have to learn when you go from being a player to being a jmod is how to interact with people on social media and this is this is completely optional because not all jmods need to interact with social media it, it, we, we i could never tweet ever and yeah. nobody would bat an eyelid right but i think it makes me better at the game better like better at my job should i say right by yeah. interacting with these people and finding out what they want now, the biggest problem with that was, I think you've probably seen it, there was a tweet, I, a conversation I had with Ari Slash that was me trying to play devil's advocate. But when you look at the tweets in isolation, it looks really bad. And it was basically, I think Ari Slash was upset about it. And to me, I was trying to read what he was saying, but I couldn't really understand it. So I thought it might be he got an arcane and he didn't want to see his arcane grind being devalued by a new better thing right which is a, a completely valid standpoint so i asked if that was how he felt and he, he felt it was appropriate for an iron man to have to do this level of grind first but that instantly came across as me people thinking that i think that's inappropriate when i've yeah. just said like in this <laughs> it could be completely fine to have this super mega combination of two rare items and being awesome right yeah um 
the difference is that it doesn't matter because players now believe that's entirely what I think. And it didn't help that I had zero corp KC at the time and Bandos <laughs> was just holding my hilt, right? Because yeah. I at that point, I was also about, you know, 1100 Bandos KC in, <laughs> yeah. you know, trying to get a hilt. So corp is on my agenda and I don't mind grind, especially because we kind of knew how rare these things were. You know, we were looking at the sigils from corp, you know, and saying, oh, group boss, we want these really expensive, really high value things. But the way I handled that was just terribly, right? Um, I don't honestly we, remember the all these conversations. Uh, I mean, but I I can I kind of remember just the gist of people thought you just didn't want to grind in arcane. <laughs> but yeah, I never saw it that way. I just that was what was being told to me. Just I didn't really follow the whole thread or anything. But at the end of the day, people. So some people would just jump on and like to meme. I know people were that was the they were quoting it back to me do you think of the one in one three one in one three six five is appropriate for an item and blah blah yeah i get it right people like to meme but i handled that situation terribly and yeah but i think I, this all started with are there any plans for for nightmare and i think like i hope that the design process behind it and like the problem is it's just too boring and i'm not sure if you followed it but in the most recent live stream uh kieran mentioned uh fuzani's nightmare yeah um and the way so that is something both top uh top modes if you want to call it that and fasani's nightmare came about through ideation it was kind of like free ideation that we had and there were members of the team that were like you know obviously we can't turn around a raid if we want like in ideation do you know what i mean yeah <laughs> you get two days a month like you know we'd see you in 2030 by the time we make a raid at two days a month uh let alone every other month because you know one of them is themed so we were like, what can we do in the short term to help address, you know, some of the lack of PVM content and look at some of the things players have wanted in the game. And I think Fazani's Nightmare is that hope to be a more suitable PVM challenge for the higher level players. And I don't know what that reward structure is going to be look like because I'm not going to be part of the team on that right now. But, you know, I've, I've seen the content. I've play tested the content, which is, you know, players talk about we want you to work on raids three instead of this well it's it's basically done right because it was done in someone's free ideation do you know what yep. i mean so i'm excited to see hopefully fazani's nightmare you know alleviate some of the like how boring the grind is <laughs> yeah so what do you um, think about hours wise because uh to be honest like me personally i wouldn't mind if you know fasani's nightmare like drastically or not maybe not drastically but gave it like a 20 percent time save if it's going to be more difficult or something like that i don't know what you guys plan are if you're going to make the rewards better or just anything but i th <laughs> i don't want i almost sound like anything i say at this point is just going to be like oh well you just want this because you're doing nightmare at the time but like i really feel like at this point drop shouldn't be like the time wise is what it is now and it shouldn't really be affected um mm -hmm. yeah so what do you i guess is it gonna increase the drop chance or what or what do you expect i think it's an interesting uh it's an interesting discussion and i don't know where it will ultimately lie i think my personal opinion is that the drop rates could be increased slightly um assuming the content is difficult enough to warrant it. But I think there is a limit to how far that can go yeah. because it's already been established to be a long grind. And I think it's also going to be dependent on how the community feel about that. You know, it could be an element of, Hey, we'd release the content. Uh, we, it fails a poll that say we poll it, we poll it to have a marginal increase in drop rates or whatever. And that fails. That could be once the community play it, they have a different opinion, right? Yeah. Uh, cause that, that's always a thing cause they don't actually know from the description of blog, but I think it kind of makes sense to me just because I don't think the time to get all the drops from nightmare is too bad. It is, it's long, but there are a lot of drops there, right? It's not corp where you're getting three items that two of them have niche uses, right? Yeah. And they're, it's, they're, they are all niche. It's a long grind, but at this, like you said, I mean, we literally, as Iron Man, chose to limit ourselves. So mm -hmm. when there is a grind that's not necessary, not like any grind is actually fully necessary, but I agree. And it can be whatever, however many hours you guys would like it to be. But um, yeah, 
to change it. It's not like you're getting nothing. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. You're not getting nothing, right? Because, you know, first few hundred hours into that grind, you've probably got a couple of Inquisitor pieces. Maybe maybe you've even got lucky and got an orb. And it might not be, you know, even an Eldritch orb as use. And you're even seeing stuff. It's not like it's, you know, um, thousands of hours and then just to get one item. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know the mace is the the big one people talk about because mostly because of its cost save over the scythe specifically at nightmare, but also like is other applications. Um, you know the Inquisitor set is actually the best DPS against zero defense over any other um, like mace sealed or rapier. You know as long as you can use the armor set, that makes sense. I'm actually uh, I'm I'm gonna just interrupt real quick. Do you think there uh, that you guys plan to make another buff to Inquisitors? I know one of the suggestions was to make it so instead of the 0.5 percent per piece it's a one percent and then the full set would be four instead of 2.5 and that would just simply give super high hitting weapons like an elder mall two max hits and it would give uh the ham joint some love and it would give it one max hit um do you guys plan on making any more changes to inquisitors because it is just i in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinions that have used Inquisitor, it just doesn't, it's just not good enough. It's like, just so niche. The benefit of Inquisitor to me was always the increased accuracy and not the damage. But our damage calculations always tend to prefer, like our DPS calculations always prefer damage. Like one max hit is notable, yeah. right? Um, in the DPS it does. Whereas like, you know, you could increase accuracy by like going from... It, god 75 to 76 77 and you barely see any difference yeah. right um it's just the way our game kind of works um i don't think i'd want to increase the max hits any further because i think scythe with inquisitor is already really strong that's true uh, the fact that it affects scythe i think is a bit ridiculous in the first place um to me i actually think that the inquisitor could have been a way to have an alternative alongside scythe instead of just buffing the scythe but you know to do that, you would probably need to take the crush option off the scythe, which I think is an interesting discussion as it is, right? Yeah, that would uh, be. It would have a lot of implications, and it would make a scythe a lot less useful at a lot more places than it is. And you could argue scythe is worth it. You know, it's very, very expensive to use. Yeah. Um, whether you're a main or an iron. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting topic. I I don't think I'd want to generally increase the stage for a few other reasons. Um, I think you've mentioned yourself and other people as well in the community. I'm generally not a fan of percentage modifiers, if I'm yeah, being honest. Not at all. And damage. Yep. They they scale too out of hand too quickly, um, yep. and it's one of the reasons that, I mean, with like the equipment rebalancing stuff, and you know, players were saying to us in the last proposal, just make crystal armor set do like a lot more damage to the do bow. Do not and you do re- that, <laughs> please. For you the re- love of God. <laughs> yeah, like. Almost the better implementation for all of them, for Arc Light, for Dragon Hunter Lands, for everything, is to have, hey, this thing gets plus 20 strength against dragons. So it's a flat, yes. always, five max hits against dragons. And then what that means is, like, for those Dragon Hunter things, we can turn around and be like, okay, this is the tier 75 Dragon Hunter weapon. Yes. There's, it makes it, we can then introduce a tier 80 Dragon Hunter weapon that's even better. That doesn't, you know, that is another flat amount better, and you end up with this sort of much better system. I would, to be on, I would kill yeah. for something like that to, like in the equi- I know you guys are still in the process of equipment rebalancing, but that would be so good, and um, because like with new armor, like let's just say raids three armor comes out with something that's twice as good as Bandos, so it has like plus uh, twelve instead of the current plus six, like mm-hmm. that is just gonna make the dragon hunter lance so much like just increase the gap over a rapier by like so much more and especially the arc light the arc light is just gonna be <sighs> disgusting and every single thing is a dragon and a demon almost so it's like you're basically just using these two weapons yep yeah yeah and that's the problem arc light is always going to be the best against demons and dragon hunter lance is always going to be the best against dragons and there's literally nothing we can do now with them as they currently stand right there's literally no niche to, in, in, to do and it's something like if you ever look at how ridiculous dragon hunter crossbow is with void and salve compared oh. to like a capped out tebow so if you if you like looked at a capped out tebow at 250 right you could give vorkath zero defense and 250 magic and dragon hunter crossbow still it's not even close 
like it's so disgusting because that's salve percentage modifier on top of void percentage modifier on top it's of dragon disgusting. and then you got I the drat and then you got the like the diamond bolts <laughs> like that like i remember hitting like i think i hit like an 89 or something i'm like what am i hitting right now <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous what that max hit is but if you look at the difference it's something i can't remember the exact numbers it's something like high 50s max hit with armadillo and just the dragon under crossbow but as soon as you add void and salve it's like 70s to 80s right it i, I can't remember the exact numbers now because i don't have them in front of me but you know that's ridiculous and obviously the accuracy is way lower but you don't care when your max hit went up by like 25 yeah <laughs> for real now i've i am uh, you might have already heard it in previous things but i'm just i'm actually against arc light and dragon bane i just i just don't like it i really wish that there was just I, I, as much as i like niche and stuff i don't like it when there's just this thing is now best in slot for every single one of these types of monsters and like there's no other option i really wish that like the sailed or mace and rapier were like the top three and like you could kind of just choose almost i don't know i, I really just miss that because so everything's a dragon and a demon so I don't mind generally the lance being better than a rapier against dragons, but I think it's too good, and it's gonna scale even further. One, you know, I, I, I yeah. There's a line though, right? Yeah, and a thing I like about the arc light at least is its charge. I really, on release, I was really hoping that the lance would have been a charged weapon, because then it's like, okay, this thing ain't just free. You gotta charge it with. I was actually initially hoping and this is a few months after Vorkath's release. I always wished it was like some sort of Vorkath scales where it's like you got to do Vorkath to charge this or like Hydra or some some Hydra scales or something like something's like you got to keep going back to charge this weapon because it is best in slot and like the fact that it just completely outclasses a rapier in every single situation against dragons is just silly for for free yeah That's I know I, I agree opinion. I think I think the charge system only has the issue of i mean it, it fixes some of the issue it has the other issue of uh iron man asking for packs of it to exist <laughs> in, in a shop yeah. or something yeah. right yeah um you, you know it, it, it literally comes down to i don't want to go back to content that i've completed because i know some irons feel that way about zolra right yeah like i'm already at five thousand zolra and i still have to go back for scales yep and i don't think that is a good obviously like we're talking about game design for a game mode that chooses to limit themselves, yep. which always becomes that super gray area. But, you know, it does have downsides having a charge system for everything. I mean, eventually people are going to... You, you can imagine we're on Raids 5, but Scythe is still relevant, and you still need to keep going back to Raids Tier of Blood. It's not that bad, because, like, obviously Vials of Blood drop in, a, you know, much higher value, right, um, than you generally need. But, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I think that with Equipment Rebalance, uh, that's mostly what I've been the last, you know several weeks months i don't know i've lost track of time but for, for what we're working with now and if you read the most recent i think you, I, I actually watched your video about it, so i know you have the I'm goal hard. is to the goal is to get right what we've already laid out and got proposed i don't think we'd want to complicate it by saying oh and we're also gonna hit every single percentage modifier yeah um and players have asked hey can you what about torag's hammers and blah, blah blah and like sure if we wanted to buff torag's hammers let's 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 clear the, let's clear our table of things yeah. that we've already got on discussion before, because that was literally the problem with the first. It's overloaded. Blog. There's so much to it. Yeah. Like, the the biggest reason it got is we're like, okay, let's put this blog out. Okay, like, just as we expected, toxic blowpipe is a contentious discussion point. Like, we knew that going in, right? Let's put attention. Okay, we think we've got toxic blowpipe. Okay, then suddenly everyone's talking about dins and black dehyde. Right? Yeah. But, but you guys weren't talking about that last week, or if they were, it was a low amount of comments, right? So now we're, we're going back to that, and then and then we get that hopefully in a better place, and then like, oh, like suddenly we're talking about blowpipe and again, and it's like, oh, I thought you guys were okay. You know what I mean? When you you keep jumping back and forth between too many things, and it actually lengthens the process substantially. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you got to imagine that every single time we get these feedback sessions, and we're looking at Reddit, and we're looking at Twitter, and we're looking at everything, like Instagram, our own forums, trying to really understand what the players think, and you know addressing all the feedback points that we think we can it really comes down to like all of these are meetings that are going on like to discuss this where you know a bunch of people like eight people nine people ten people come together and go hey you know do you do we, how do we feel about this feedback do we agree with it do we not agree with it but 
all of those meetings never have the time to run numbers on it right yeah it's just and the one thing i don't like about our previous proposal was our original proposal before we met the players halfway was actually in a much better place for the health of the game but because we met the players halfway it broke what we were set out to do yeah which was we went from having a blowpipe that was um specialized to a blowpipe that was just worse yeah right because and that was the biggest thing with that proposal if you actually ran the numbers and we this is the thing we couldn't know this until like because you know we're talking about a couple of weeks going through all the feedback we're, we're trying to juggle lots of other things and, you know you, you're kind of judging it on okay we can probably get away with increasing the strength of rune darts and and dragon darts back to what they were and that's what we ended up doing right but when you run the numbers again across like the variety of content that we have you end up seeing that like oh you're still using toxic blowpipe and twisted bow everywhere like literally everywhere <laughs> yeah. it's just that when you do use the blowpipe it's worse yeah and that isn't a good feeling for the players either because it's just like oh you just made us work and that's hopefully what the the next that blog is alluding to um that one we just released is you know it's okay to make the blowpipe weaker but you need to have something in its place right you need to have some alternative for okay you're no you're you're, you're still weaker but you're no longer blowpiping this thing that would have in our previous example been 20 percent worse right yeah. you've now got another alternative to use instead and i think the hopefully i know you kind of skimmed over in your video i don't know if you but those effective defense um versus uh dps graphs are such a good way to show it because but in our previous proposal players were asking oh you you told us how it is against shamans what's what's the data against mystics and what's the data against vasa and what percentage lost it against this and you have people in comments answering but some of them were wrong like i i flat out saw numbers on reddit that players are giving oh this is 30 percent worse in this situation and then i'd run the same numbers myself and be like that's wrong but it obviously wrong, i can't jump yeah. on I can't jump on Reddit and tell them that because I'm just going to get downvoted and, you know, <laughs> like the the co point of my comment is going to be lost because nobody's going to see it, right? Um, the, these effective defense versus DPS graphs are a really good way to show what we were kind of trying to say, which is you don't need to know how every monster is. You just need to see what's it look like at a low, a mid, and a high, and then interpolate, Yeah. you know, based on the defense of the creature. And that's hopefully what these graphs do, which was actually a phenomenal idea by Arcane. I'm not even going to take credit for it. I, I pitched. I, I said the idea to Arcane. Like, be really good if we could see how it would work against every boss. And then he did some. He did it. He did the work on the spreadsheet. And said this actually wasn't as difficult as we thought it was. And I was like, what? He said, yeah, I just did this. And we never ever thought of presenting the information that way. But it, it's such a clean and easy to, like, easy to read way to say, hey, this line represents this defense. This line represents this defense. And you could see, like, what's better. You know so hopefully that kind of makes sense <laughs> yeah no it, it does and i definitely skipped over it in the ramble i made because I just, what am i supposed to do just read it to people like you know here's the numbers no but people can see it and it was it was a very good visual um you know what i really want and i know it's a huge project but that thing that you guys offered of the the range styles like blunt piercing and uh, magic i think was the other one that is yeah. the coolest thing. I want it so bad, but I know it might. It, it's likely not to get through the game because of how much it would affect like the entire game and how big of a project it would be. But that is honestly that would fix so much, and it would make like darts wouldn't just be range damage. It would be like you got like things would be like really immune to piercing or something, but really good to blunt and stuff. I just I don't know. I'm just. I want that so bad, but I understand how big of a thing it would be. It represents the most perfect world solution that fixes all the balancing issues, yeah. if I'm being honest, right? And magic damage doesn't need to be the thing for ranged. It was the, I'm writing a blog, and I need to think of something that's not blunt and piercing, and I can't think, but, ma you know, you just need a third yeah, option whatever on the it was, table yeah. to make, it make sense, right? Um, but the thing that, the thing that just, I think we try to emphasize in the blog, and players pointed to oh it's a lot of dev work and it is and i'm not going to say we're not going to do something because it's a lot of dev work if players really want us to it's inevitably delay combat achievements for that long it's just the the side effect of that right yeah um it means that one we're putting time and resources thing that isn't something else the players might want yeah right and it also might not be the most universally like 
agreed thing. Players like old school RuneScape yep. because of its simplistic nature and combat system. You know, like that is some of its drawing features. You suddenly like start changing the dynamic of how close are you getting to EOC before people start feeling uncomfortable, right? Yeah, no, that, you know, that's a EO good point. EOC started, I think. Oh, obviously there's the whole like, I don't know, I wasn't with Jagex at the time, but there's the talk of, you know, chasing World of Warcraft and its action bar system, right? But part of it must have also stemmed from the inherent limits that our systems have, right? Uh, Constitution is a thing in RuneScape 3 because, well, people are hitting close to 80 with special attack weapons. We can't actually introduce a special attack weapon that hits close to 90, right? Yep. Because then it just becomes you one-shot someone with no counterplay, right? Unless we start increasing the max health of the player, and suddenly you're looking at why those is it Torva armors and stuff from like Nex came in? The things that increase the player's max hit points? I'm not I'm not familiar with RS3 at all. I'm not either. But I think there were armors that did that. And you can kind of see where the logic went from developers yeah. who saw the limits of the current system, right? Um I'd be really scared to go down that route because I think what we've got works, and I think we've got a lot of ways that you know to to make it work, but I just think that different style thing just just really will it'll change how the game feels and now you're definitely that's... right and it's not just adding three different attack styles it's going into every single monster and changing what it's weak to and what it's it would be a huge project and again yeah no i would have probably issues with it like why is this not this way or something you know in a perfect world it could work but and the logical next step if you do that is let's have elemental weaknesses to magic and i already know people are going to love that idea but I think RuneScape 3 did that, and they had the problem that magic was so strong generally because there was like four different potential weaknesses a creature could have or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, and all it took was picking a different spell. Uh, wow. I don't know if that's true. I, I, I read that I, I read that or heard that somewhere, and I don't know RuneScape 3 all that yeah, well. Yeah, I've, I've heard that, that like magic is OP there and range is OP in our game. So, yeah. Like, it, it's just interesting to think that where's the line, right? Yeah. Because... You could almost keep moving that line a little bit by little bit, year by year. And I think it's also, it's a really extreme solution to fix what is fundamentally a problem with one weapon. Right? Yeah. It, I, so, guess, I guess the thing is, is like, it would just bring more, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's sad that like a ballista can never be like that good anywhere just because of how slow it is. But if it was extremely just this piercing weapon or i don't know if it would even be considered piercing or blunt but just something where it's like okay this actually has like a use somewhere instead of just everything being ranged but yeah blowpipe definitely just made everything in chaos and it created what we now have as the dragon hunter crossbow that would have never been a thing if it wasn't for the blowpipe and then tebow would never have been as powerful if it wasn't for the blowpipe yeah. I mean, yeah. And, I mean, like, power creep is an absolute thing, right? Like, yeah. it, people talk about it. Why are why are the JMods scared of power creep? We're not scared of power creep. It's just, like, blowpipe consumes that entire tier of power, right? If, if you look at those DPS versus effective defense graphs, you'll kind of see that, like, the gap between a 250 magic bow and a blowpipe, it's so small. Because the accuracy, like, the blowpipe's just too accurate for its damage output is, is the ultimate, like, yeah. thing you, you realize, right? Like, it doesn't matter how the defense increases. The DPS doesn't drop that quickly, right? You, you almost need, like, um, you almost need to make it drop faster and have, like, it's kind of, we talk about, like, our perfect meta would be, like, weapon A has really high DPS at low defense, but drops off quicker, right? But weapon B has lower de uh, DPS against no, no defense, but because its accuracy is high, it degrades slower. And eventually those lines meet, right? Yeah. Eventually, there's an intersection point where they're exactly the same against this creature, but is the, if the defense is any higher, you use weapon B. If the defense is any lower, you choose weapon A, right? Yep. And that, at least, is a more interesting dynamic of, you know, sure, like, you could have, like, three or four intersecting lines, and it gets really complicated, and players might go, oh my god, I don't know what weapon to use, but you might still have a general rule of thumb of, god, this weapon, this creature's more tanky. I should use a thing with better accuracy. And I think that's where the... That's, like, hopefully, like... That's what the blog that we just had is trying to explain, like, could be. And if you read this, if you, I th I'm sure you answered the survey. Like, there's also, there's, like, things in the survey that, like, allude to that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll cover this. So, Ignoble and Connor OSRS both asked, 
Uh, basically, has there been any progress to combat Shopscape for irons to obtain blood runes? I know recently there was an update to the Prif Shop uh, prices, but that only feeds the Shopscape mentality. So what do you, yeah? What are your thoughts on Shopscape? Like, do you like it? Do you like that it's an option, or are you like me that's just against it? Uh, sorry, two seconds. Uh, my headset's almost out of battery. I'm just off and plugging it in. There we go. Um, but yeah, uh, against Shopscape, Jack, I've given my stance on a QA, and a I think, a long time ago, but Q&As are so hit and miss. Did somebody see it? Did they not? Um, I, I, so generally, I don't like Shopscape, right? I, I think it's not a good thing for the game, for Iron Man, should I say. Um, to me, a main is, I have a problem, and money's gonna solve it, right? I go to the GE, and I buy my problems away. Yep. And to me... The Iron Man is just not about that. Sure, there are some skills that require money. And, you know, people could like the fact that smithing is money. I, I don't like needing money. I'd rather there was a much better way to get gold ore, but how do you compete with Shopscape? And that's kind of the same problem we have with Blood Runes, right? You could introduce a method that brings Blood Runes into the game at like 10k an hour, and they'd, someone would still be able to get more um, Blood Runes from a shop per hour, right? Yep. So... It's like, where's that line? And then obviously 10k blood runes an hour from an actual in-game activity, that's that's a hell of a lot, right? And if that is bottable, that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there, there's all these considerations. But long story, like I, I don't like Shopscape. The Prif Shop was just, hey, does it make sense that this shop is more expensive and it would help alleviate at least the fact that it's very overcrowded at blood runes, even if it, as the, the player says, like does. I've loved it. As much as I'm against Shopscape, it's just nice that there's a, another shop. It's like, oh, thank God. It's just this one was getting overworked to the extreme. But yeah. No, but, it's, but like that's the thing. It's like there you can never compete with shops. And that is if you're gonna keep them, that's just has to be understood. But yeah, like I'm excited for the Temple Guardian or whatever <laughs> mini game is coming out that re- unleashes the blood talisman for the true blood altar i think there's a lot of potential there to at least for blood runes yeah i mean i i actually worked on that ideation pitch with uh three other people uh we, we spun that entire thing up in two days and it's always interesting putting this stuff to blog like that because like there's 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 models of npcs we just grabbed from like magic training arena and people got to understand there's such a different thing from even the things you put together in a game jam like two day ideation compared to you know something you work on for like you know a few uh, a you know maybe a month's worth of work before putting to a blog right yeah. there's definitely that level of polish that is missing but all that aside i mean that idea was hey iron players do tend to need a better way to get blood runes and we're not okay with shopscape i mean the, the prif shop is just us saying hey we acknowledge that we don't have a solution in the immediate term we'll at least make more people like it's we're fixing the crowding issue as opposed yeah. to making the problem worse is, is kind of how i see that um you know the the answer to shopscape should never be well you know there's thousands of people at the shop and that's the deterrent right yeah um but my stance generally on the the top weapons is i think oh god i'm gonna get so much twitter hate for this I think there are a lot of entitled iron players that feel like because they've earned a weapon, they have to use it everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't think that needs to necessarily be so. I mean, I think there's actually an element of choice between I'm going to spend the blood runes to make this grind faster or I'm not and I'm going to use the alternatives. Like, an Abyssal Bludgeon isn't all that much worse at the Nightmare, right? And I've even seen like people do mixes. Like, they don't have any Inquisitor pieces, so they're going to use the Scythe for like, Phase 2 Nightmare, yeah. right, with the Parasites. And then they'll use like their other weapons. And I've seen you even use the Toxic Trident, right? Because you're not going to use your Sang. I don't have a Sang. Um, oh, you don't have a Sang. <laughs> yeah, I went really dry on the weapons. I went five times rate for a TOB weapon. And I still don't have a Sang. So. But I did get my Scythe very blessed that it was under 1,000. Yeah. Uh, can't complain about getting uh, getting a Scythe. Yeah. <laughs> But I think, I think there's an element of that. People unlock a weapon and they feel like they should use it everywhere. But... The counterpoint to that is the Sang and Scythe are just probably not good designs if you consider Iron Man. And that could be okay, as we've mentioned before, right? It could be okay that an item just doesn't isn't friendly towards Iron players, if that's the goal of the design. 
I think it could have been slightly better. I think that Scyther Sang, you know, using two blood runes might have accomplished the same thing because they really wanted a blood rune sync, I think. And by God, they accomplished that. Um, <laughs> I don't think it needed to be as extreme. Um, I think there also could have been, like, you know, an upgrade from Theater Blood that's a permanent unlock you attach to your Scythe. Maybe it uses less. I don't know. There's, like, lots of little things that you can think of to fix it. But I just think those weapons are not friendly. And it does suck to, like get this super rare powerful weapon and you want to use it everywhere right as a player you don't care about the the game design implications or the choice you actually want to use your powerful weapon everywhere so i completely sympathize with the players who feel that right yeah so yeah i see both sides like i say i still think you don't need to use them everywhere but i mean to I mean, be fair i've been able to use it literally everywhere for the past year so i've have earned a lot of gp in this game and so like there was there was always the option am i gonna just liquidize my entire bank with alks and stuff and buy all these blood runes or am i just gonna use a bludgeon until i get a mace like so there still is that option and like people that get early weapons and stuff and complain tend to just have a very you know not not, not many hours put into their iron or something because i feel like when you get to a point where I don't know. There, there is a point in Iron Man where you really can sustain a scythe in a saying for a good year with constant use. If you really wanted to go down that road and just alk everything that you own, because um, but yeah, no, no. And I'm against the the idea of <laughs> turn in a duplicate item for untradeable blood runes. I think that's the worst idea ever. Like, yeah, let's just make people camp tob like for everything like oh my god i mean i understand where the suggestion comes from right i get that it's like i have a problem so i'm gonna look for a solution hey look this is how zolra fixed that solution so let's let's do the same here right because that yeah. worked for zolra right um so i understand the logic i also understand the idea that it doesn't really negatively hurt anyone if they're untradeable you know uh but again you run into the oh i gotta keep doing top for my blood runes it's kind of why I, that's what Guardians of Gilliner's intent to do with the Blood Talisman, the Rune Crafting outfit, even the mini game itself, is to say, hey, you know, there is a way to get Blood Runes that's faster than the 2k ish an hour. Yeah, that's um, pretty low. Isaiah, you know, that is going to be more like traditional Rune Crafting, where you can get Bloods. You're still going to have to invest the time Rune Craft, but you know, players constantly meme about or meme it's meme's the wrong word it's a legitimate thing where like you could rune craft to 99 rune crafting and still not have enough blood runes for like a year you know that sort of idea yeah. if you use it hard like hopefully this will fix that thing where like you know if you did do 99 rune crafting only on blood runes you'd probably have blood runes for a lot longer right because you're getting more blood runes per xp sort of thing you know yeah. um hopefully no, I'm, that's I'm a excited. fix it's 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 like let's fix it with an actual piece of content um and i mean i'm not going to say like this is like sepulchre in terms of difficulty i know people talk about oh husky's making a new um a new skilling activity it's going to be sepulchre it, it i think like it's not even going to be me working on the impl actual implementation um if it goes forward because i mean i think i'm basically pegged for uh leagues three <laughs> regardless of whatever anything else i think like players aren't going to be surprised by that either um but i'm excited to see what comes of it if if we end up doing it um i know that like roadmaps are like super up in the air always right you know we always try to adapt our roadmaps to hopefully what the players like what we need for the players and i think that's the biggest thing that is like players are it's the reason people complain about raids three you know it's we want something in a while and then when we actually look at our roadmap we're like oh and by we i mean the old school team and not me because i'm not part of production right but you know even the team give feedback on it critically right you know like like oh like hey like maybe we should add this or maybe we should do this or maybe we should tweak that right but you know when you look at it and go oh it has actually been a long you know and combat achievements was going to be the only pvm thing and that's been delayed you can see why people get frustrated, right? Yeah. And why they want something new. And hopefully, you know, Fasani's and Top Hard Mode will help that. But we acknowledge that this isn't this isn't the shiny new thing they want. And yes, it is recycling content. But, you know, if we can recycle content to provide something, you know, 
in the immediate term because people are unhappy you know that doesn't also mean that we can't you know do other things in the future yeah if that makes sense that that's 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 the same answer that like uh mod swing gave on the on the q a you know yeah it's not you're getting top hard mode or something you want later you know yeah no i i think most people understand except for people that don't want to choose not to understand but yeah um okay so this is a thing that i've always been advocating for and dr neuron asks stall ticks removed from gold rocks when and i think i i'm just gonna add in to every rock is there is there any sort of internal about that whatsoever i assume not because nobody talks about it. nobody really cares because there's different methods for mining but it's a damn shame that you can't just mine rocks like because they're just so bad like you can't just mine a rock in the world because it's just like it, you're just being inefficient go go to volcanic mine go to blast mine go to anything else is there a is there a chance we could see that that one tick stall get removed and potentially maybe help the the respawn timer i think it was tanner dino the last uh the last guest i had on he was just mentioning how iron ore respawns in like five seconds but silver ore respawns in a minute and it's literally like five levels higher to mine silver and just and, and it also has a tick delay so it just becomes like impossible to mine it basically because it's just so much worse than other alternatives so i'm not super familiar with the tick delay I'm, i don't think that'll surprise you either um but is this across all mining rocks so or just specific ones there are three rocks they're sandstone granite and iron which immediately after mining you can mine the next one like you don't have a delay which means like three ticking um granite for example is possible if it wasn't for that like if you were if you were to have like four gold rocks or something and let's just say the success rate was just as high you couldn't three tick them uh you'd have to four tick them because there's a there's a delay after mining it that stalls you for a tick and it's on basically every rock besides those three I just listed, including gem rocks. Gem rocks, the gem mine you can only four tick if you were to like use like urban tar or whatever you're gonna use. And it just makes it so uh it's like it's like disgusting. It's like you're in <laughs> it's like you're in this jelly, you just can't move fluidly. It's horrible. Like the whole the whole thing is just horrible. It doesn't feel interactive, it just feels like you're being stuck and yeah that's basically what we want to get removed is the delay at the end of finishing mining or is it on arriving at the next rock no it's it's at the end of mining okay because if it was arriving at the rock i believe that's something that we put in place to make sure that the animation doesn't start before you arrive if that makes sense uh but if it's after mining a rock i'm honestly not sure and i'd have to check the code to see what's going on there there is a chance that a dev just decided to randomly in like delay the player after finishing mining in it could even be the case that like iron and granite are the exceptions but obviously we wouldn't go and fix that because like like uh, exceptions is a bug you know like someone forgot to yeah but obviously we wouldn't go and fix that like because that doesn't make sense to like ruin like three ticking all these things yeah. you know no uh, it's I, just honest yeah I honestly don't know, and I'd also be curious to know: is this, um, is this like essential this? or something? Like, what would it do to rates? Do you know what I mean? So the so, the main thing, like one of the reasons why I've been advocating for this for so much for so long, is because I want it. I want there to be a way, an old school way, not just some new mini game where you get gold ore like volcano or whatnot. But like a, an old school traditional way where, hey, I can mine gold that's out in the... So there's like this, you know, there's gold ore in the crafting guild. Imagine you could just go mine the gold and it actually responds at a reasonable rate. Doesn't take... Like the success rate is out of control. Like it takes... Sometimes it'll legit take 60 seconds to mine a gold rock if you get unlucky. And just the whole... The whole uh, mining gold or mining silver or mining mithril or anything it's just out of control slow and tedious and 
really could be buffed and could this could actually alleviate the whole like shopscape thing uh for smithing and uh, that was basically the main thing is to make rates so there would be a ne there would need to be a lot of things done with gold for example to make it actually competitive so it could sort of compete with blast furnace it, it would be more than just removing the tick it would be like respawn rates are quicker and stuff but the only effect to just simply removing the delay i think the only thing that would even be slightly competitive to the meta which is granite currently would be gem rocks and that's if you could make gem rocks three tick it would make it so mining gem rocks is about 120k an hour like perfectly like without losing ticks and and you'd be profiting gems but that would be um pretty tough to maintain it would actually be tougher than three tick granite just because it's like a huge route you'd have to make so nothing would break the meta it would just give more options sure so i think like it definitely needs more investigation to the meta side anyway right and like yeah. even like pulled the community in that regards you know in terms of would you guys be okay with this happening to gem rocks and would you be okay with this achieving this level of mining rates theoretically and you know you you definitely want to pull something like that that was this meta changing yeah um but in terms of making mining better overall i think it's definitely an interesting thought and it's something that could could be done as part of a bigger project um to help mining uh i'm not gonna lie when um you know I actually went through a similar thing that a lot of our content creators did, where it was like, "Oh, let's let's try RuneScape three out." Uh, recently, um, I did actually really like their their mining rework from a player perspective. That our our game would hate it in terms of like, um, it would completely remove like any like three tick mining and stuff spoke about. It. But I did like the. I'm not sure if you've seen how they, their mining works, but it, it's essentially like a soft kind of wood cutting in it. Like you can mine a rock for a while, it eventually. Like, cause they have like some sort of like action bar or something that yeah, like, I, I it's like an energy resource that like depletes or something. Yeah, and once I you mine it for too long, yeah, I saw Ari it, slash mining like a gold rock in the crafting guild, and he just sat there. Yeah, and you need to make sure you click it before, like, otherwise you'll start mining a lot slower. So okay. it's like So it's like it's like uh, it's not as like AFK as wood cutting in that regard, but like you know, it, it was its own thing. And then they also had this thing where like rocks start lighting up around you and. If you click this one, I think you do more because it, 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 their system's kind of around doing damage to the rock to get ore. Yeah, uh, it's kind of roughly how it's coded. But I did like the idea that it was more fluid in terms of the rate at which you get ore, and obviously it was accompanied by a much greater rework to, you know, rune actually being tier forty and all this stuff. Um, I think it would be interesting to pitch the community a mining rework in the say that would, you know, as you said, like actually allow people to go into the world and mine. Yeah. I think the biggest thing they did that helped that, which could be explored was like you have like an ore box so like you're not just limited to 28 ore and then you know miles from a bank but you could actually store like 100 or so ore in this ore box you know yeah what what was really cool is that would actually be really cool because i was just thinking adding a deposit box um next to like the brimhaven horseshoe where that like gold horseshoe is or a bunch of gold rocks um up in brimhaven just where nobody ever goes but uh it would be a kind of a cool thing if like okay there's this little spot in Brimhaven where you can actually go mine a bunch of gold and it's actually pretty quick if you're like gonna you know put in some effort you could actually get a lot of gold pretty quickly and it wouldn't it wouldn't cost money and you wouldn't have to use shops and but yeah yeah I do think that I do think there's a way we could go with mining it, it makes me interested to think like how could we pull off a, a mining rework in old school runescape where people are so nostalgic over how mining feels you know yeah because i think that is something to consider and, and let's not like forget smithing in that, right and i don't mean a rework in in terms of mining in like you know making rune actually be 40 it could yeah. be it, it could not be as well um there, there's so much to consider with like what that does to out price of items and blah blah, blah you know yeah um but i do agree that like mining is not mining is so weird right mining is one of those skills that's in one of the best places in terms of diversity to train it but not in terms of like interesting ways to get the actual supplies right because volcanic mine is a completely like in cool mini game yeah 
but you get next to nothing for it because the you know you, the ore that you spend points on is you don't get all that much and even then like it's not traditional mining in terms of oh i mined an iron ore it's i bought an iron ore from a shop with yeah. points right so it's kind of like that extra layer that like dilutes it almost like what you're doing um then you've got mother load mine which is just like hey you can afk it which is again another nice thing to have as like an option to train mining but the ore is completely random um so it just kind of feels like you're getting a collection of it. and blast blast uh mining is the same but like obviously more xp and more interactive right yeah so i don't know i i, I think like a way to get more of a specific order and like to be able to focus your mining it just sounds like a better way to do it but the honest truth is i don't know how we would go about doing it and i think yeah. you know as i'm right as i'm thinking about this i'm like hmm i wonder if i could dedicate an ideation set doing this right do you know like because that's what our ideation sessions are for you know people ask like could you do this and could you do this and is there plans to do this and add this to the game ultimately it comes down to does a jmod take a fancy of suggesting it you know and then from that does does it get like there's a whole process between it goes to like team review and team get to give feedback and then you as a developer can push it forward to like the production team and then they can review it and you know they'll have data look into like you know what target audience they think it would fit and how you know we'll look at how much the update would do is this like a is this an update to make us a lot of money is this an update for retention like you know yeah. that sort of thing you know because you need a ba good balance of all of them right yeah uh so there's lots of steps to it um and just because i put it in ideation doesn't mean it would get selected but that was a big tangent just sort of explaining how things get selected but yeah it does make me think that hmm, i wonder if like i could do it but i don't think just the, removing the tick delay would accomplish like gold ore being actually like a, a solid amount per hour you, you need as you said you need to do a lot more to like respawn rates and yeah it's probably still only going to be crafting guild because it's close to a bank right yeah um so there yeah uh there's just so much like there's just so many ores in the wilderness i mean not in the wilderness just in the game just everywhere and they're just you'll never ever ever mine them because it's just so painfully slow and it's just so not worth it ever and it's just kind of mm -hmm. sad that that kind of like old school mining is just there's just mini games now to mine instead of having these like i don't know old school areas mining spots and stuff that just don't see any yeah play. i definitely agree to that and it's it's one of the things i did like about like even both leagues is you know you start off and everyone's like oh my god let's go trade our mining quickly and you see everyone scrambled around the you know yeah you're fighting over them and you know that's short-lived because people are only in the early game for as long and they're only going to do it as long as it'll get them task points or meet their goals but like sorry league points and complete tasks and meet their goals but you know yeah and that, it did bring back that idea of nostalgia you know yeah and there could be just like those mining areas could even be sort of reworked in a way like it, let's just say theoretically all this the mining just respawn rate success rates and that tick delay was removed it's like those little mining spots here and there across the world could actually be sort of you could add certain rocks just there just to make it semi efficient or something i don't know what you guys would do but it is just cool and it and i again this is me advocating for it i don't know how many people would actually really even care because they already go to their own like mother load mine or whatnot but yeah yeah i agree and it, it brings like it's it's a it's a multi-layer problem yeah. with, like you know xp rates versus how it feels nostalgia versus getting the ore and are you getting a good amount and if i'm being completely honest it's one of those things that the iron man game mode is specifically good at doing uh we notice this a lot with twisted league is when players are forced to be self-sufficient it points out some I'm not going to say flaws, but potential issues that could exist with the game design, right? Because if something is bad, a player who's a main could just buy their way around it, right? But yep. when you don't have that option, you suddenly go, oh, it really is strange that there is no actual good way to get all the ores you need for smithing. Yeah. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's those game design things that be, like the Iron Man game mode actually highlights, right? And when it highlights these things, the answer could still be, you don't need to change anything it's completely fine as is and you know you don't change the game for iron man but 
it does highlight that the mining experience might not be ideal for anyone. You know, maybe even the new players. Maybe they, they go mining and they're like, this is just boring, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a bunch of things. We'll move on. Uh, Manked just asks, can he just talk about DMM for like 10 minutes to get me hyped? So, <laughs> Manked was also a previous guest on the Sabic Castle. I'll give him the courtesy. Do you have any thing to say about dmm yeah so i'm just gonna double check because i did ask what i'm allowed to say before that because i saw manx question because i don't i don't want to leak stuff uh, accidentally yeah. um cool yeah so sorry just recapping what i what i spoke to him about um so it's hard to commit to anything because like you know until we give release dates to players and until we have blogs out with information you know it's hard to say yes we're working on this yes it's coming out you know or you know in 2021 or in 2022 or, or yeah. whatever right uh but um there is definitely a lot of appetite in the team uh and amongst the leadership team to do something new fresh and exciting with dead man mode that i'm not going to say like more akin to Lee. I, I want to say akin to Lee's, but not in terms of how they work, but in terms of each dead man mode feeling very special, uh, being a yearly thing, you know, we do things to shake up the metas in huge ways. I'm not saying we take away a Varax flare, right? Yeah. You know, that suddenly that's not a meta. I mean, like in terms of, you know, let's actually shake up like the entire, the entire game of dead man mode and, and, and truly just like bring it back. Cause dead man mode suffered for, lots of reasons you know like whether it was a not enough dev time put into it uh, again i'd have to reiterate i wasn't on the team at the time and i don't know all the decisions that were made but you know when when a sis when you basically go from a season that is you know um three months long and you finish the finale you see how that all played out but the next season starts instantly where was the time to do feedback changes yeah right? you know it, it didn't exist right and like even leagues we spend so much time looking over the feedback and reviewing how the league went, how did the early game feel, the mid game, the late game, right? That same treatment should be done for Dead Man. And it's not about trying to fix it, right? Because I think that, like, disallowing Venom is like, Venom's too overpowered, so we're just going to remove it, right? And that does change the meta somewhat. But, like, maybe you add rules in a way that makes it so that that's not as broken, right? Yeah. You know, or, like, to, to address the issue in other ways. Um, and. As part of like, because like honestly, I swear I've been working on nothing but like designs for stuff, whether it be ERB combat achievements, um, and Dead Man. I have actually been asked to work on a design that's currently going through like sort of team review, um, and I'm quite excited to show it to players when that eventually gets through the system. With that um, it does do everything I just said and shake it up the Dead Man. Uh, and ultimately, the way I feel about that thing is it needs to go through some sort of player feedback, whether we have like smaller groups of player feedback sessions before going to wider players, you know, with people who know Deadman mode, or maybe we just put it all out to the players at once. Uh, leagues, we typically, you know, we we can surprise the players with leagues because we're doing it, it's unpolled, and we can, you know, put th like, you know, 75% of our dev work in, then reveal it. You know, it's it's like when I spoke earlier about the surprise factor, I think Leagues is the one thing we actually have where we can surprise the players in what we're offering. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to do the same for Dead Man though, because I feel like it almost needs that like player level of review and approval before yeah. we proceed with it. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited to do about it. Um, I'm excited to work on some PvP stuff as well. Um, I, I know that like, God, I, I always talk about this a little bit as well, but there is a there's an opinion in the community that i hate pvp <laughs> and that's just not true right i don't yeah. pvp in my spare time uh that that's a fact and the honest truth of that is i don't think i would enjoy doing old school runescape pvp in my spare time and unless jack x want to pay me to do it in my work time i'm probably not <laughs> going to right yeah and you know that's a personal choice like yeah. jack x do not own my free time uh they, they 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 get enough of that as it is with me sometimes staying back later than i should <laughs> so but all that aside I'm, i am excited to like you know have worked on a design for pvp content you know because it's not something I've, I've had a chance to do um and i think most of the reason people think i hate pvp stems from me again being stupid as a new dev remember i said about like how 
you need to realize what you're saying and how you speak to people yep like in the community i'm not sure if you know this there was a there was a clip that was taken from a q a like back when i was very new and it was one you know twitch chat was spamming fix pvp fix pvp fix pvp right and it this is when like i oh no oh oh, oh, i can visually remember this actually so i can visually remember this and i laughed out loud because yeah so young yeah yeah go on go on go on Young new husky, right? It's just like, <laughs> I want to help fix everyone. I want to help fix the problems, but I don't understand what you mean by fix PvP. <laughs> All I know is you want something, you want an update, but I don't know what the hell you want. So I said to players, it's kind of annoying when you just spam fix PvP. Can you actually just tell us what you want instead? Like actually provide meaningful discussion? <laughs> now, the problem is that the way this comes is, oh my God, are you are you kidding me? We've been presenting PvP ideas to Jagex for God knows how long, and they don't know what we want. Remember, this was this was me that spoke, being fairly yeah. new to the company and not yeah. being involved in any <laughs> of those previous discussions or anything from there. And that's why, if you from the clip, Alec actually shut me down. Right? <laughs> he actually turned around and said, "Well, from the player's perspective, you know, they have given those suggestions." Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, "Oh, I I didn't realize that." Right? And people yeah. go, "Oh, uh, you know." Husky just wants his own agenda, only wants Iron Man stuff. You know, like, yeah, like, you know, I in my ideation pitches, I've come up with content that sometimes, like, you know, I, I come up with content that I think is fun, but I have actually come up with about three PvP pitches, and just because they haven't seen the light of day or I've had feedback on that these changes are just because players haven't seen them and they might be in our backlog to pull in future. It doesn't mean I hate PvP and don't want to do any PvP stuff. Yeah. You know, so, you know, genuinely excited for it for some of the, the dead man mode stuff that i've been working on in design and, and hopefully players will see i don't know the timeline you know i'm yeah i'm I, unfortunately not in, in charge of that but i i agree <laughs> i think i think pvp is good for the game if, if like if it's done well and stuff do i pvp no is lms fun occasionally yeah but um like i i'm a huge fan of pvp i'm not a huge fan of the like the predator versus prey wilderness bait and stuff but absolutely pvp tournaments are amazing and it I mean, yeah, but I'm not going to really participate in it. I'm just not into it. I'm more into Iron Man progression. Yeah. No, I, I definitely feel that. But food for thought. Um, when people say they want PvP updates, are they asking for PvP updates or PKing updates? PKing. Because I think I think people don't realize there's a difference. Because PKing is PvP, but not all PvP is PKing. Yeah. Right? And people say we want PvP updates and, like, you know, in the loosest sense, Soul Wars is a PvP update. Quite literally by definition. It's player versus player minigame. Yep. Right? But that doesn't seem to be what the players want. Uh in terms of in terms of that. You know, they want ways to kill people more, which means it doesn't matter if we said, Hey, we're gonna come out with a competitive castle wars, like it's a five V five castle wars and you know, you're on teams and God we'll give all the teams relics because that'll be fun and you choose your relics and a super powerful castle wars five V five teams and their strategy. People that might sound really cool, and people, are, oh my god, that's that's that sounds like a lot of fun, and I've just made this up off the top of my head. That sounds right? amazing. Um, but that would not satisfy someone who wants a PKing update. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing that I can't figure out, and you know, maybe I'm just a stupid dev, but if people just want the experience of killing people for loot in the wilderness, it's really really hard to talk about like giving people that experience that they had when they were younger because the experience was i'm going to kill these people who don't know about item protection or sculling and activating the protect item prayer and they're they're just going to wear the gear that they think is cool and you know that makes them powerful and they're not really thinking about it and the peak airs were bad back in the day generally compared to now anyway right there's a difference between recreating the experience and recreating the content that people want right because players are smarter these days right people know exactly how to get the most offensive value for the least amount of risk and they know exactly how to make sure that they don't lose what they're they're risking right yep so that's why a lot of the stuff generally for like pvp content is like okay well if players aren't risking we're going to introduce like you know things through bounty hunter like they provide additional value on kill and then you know you have the you have the issue of then of like being very bottable and farmable because in pvp what sets the difficulty it's yep. the opposing player and if the opposing player is just going to fall over because that's the meta to get more money the players yep. will fall over player 
I don't know if I said this already in this podcast, uh, but players choose the path of least resistance, yep. and that's not the play. That's not the player's fault. That's the dev's fault for make for not for having a path of least resistance. You know. Yeah, and I, I um, have said like I think bounty hunter could only ever come back uh, if it was monitored, like monitored basically, like at at all times, which is probably pretty costly and would like you know for you guys because anything that's just generating wealth from killing another player is just inherently going to be bottable like just it's just going to be like farmed and so like it has to be monitored or else you're going to run into that issue anything with like bh anything that's just generating rewards and i don't know if players kind of get this i don't want to just like pass the buck and say hey it's not my fault to like ban bots because i mean it's not my it literally isn't my job to ban bots yeah. right but if we've got a suggestion for a cool piece of pvp content that only works if there is a severe amount of moderation put in right then that is additional resource that we need to acquire from the teams to do that moderation or we need to put content development measures into reduce that moderation or do something to help right or you know what i mean right yep and you know we already get people talking about you know people cheating and botters and gold farmers you know that team clearly already has their their hands full right and i don't know about the goings on of that team enough to really comment on anything right you know but it does make sense that if you're asking for additional moderation on something you need to make sure that team can can provide that moderation, right? Yeah. Um, so it becomes really difficult to solve the balance of of all this. Um, but you know, that side, I think Deadman still counts for both the PvP and a PKing update. It's not mainstay; it's not there permanently, but it absolutely is a PKing update, and I think that's integral to Deadman mode, where you fight, battle against each other, climb above each other, and be the the last man standing so to say at the top you know in the tournament it, yeah it's definitely exciting to watch and i, I love, love watching, watching them all it. yeah i love watching it i don't participate in them got my own stuff going on okay yeah, I, um sorry would you have anything else tad no i was just gonna say i think i think i've watched all but like two dead men they're, yeah they're, I, they're an absolute blast <laughs> I think so too they're so much fun and there's always there's always something that goes wrong <laughs> Which oh, is God. like the funniest part, because there's always just something wrong on Jagex's end. That's and it, 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 but it's funny. Like I don't think any of us really. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's a bad thing that we just don't even take it seriously. <laughs> but there's always something wrong. But it makes the whole thing just that much more fun to like watch. I have a blast. Yeah. I mean, the community loves drama. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a thing. <laughs> But as a developer, like it does make it, me not yeah, want hurts. for things to go wrong. Yeah, uh, I've only ever experienced one dead man mode since working uh, at Jagex, and that oh, was yeah. the one. That was the one where people got teleported to the final area and died instantly. <laughs> and we had to try I could just and restore. I see in like the backstage, just oh shit, what what have we done? <laughs> and and that was me backstage. Has oh, literally God. been literally I'd been with the company for for what like two I don't months know, maybe couple months yeah, yeah. ballpark that amount of time and it was like hey would would you like to help out dead man I'm like yeah sure that sounds fun <laughs> and like my job was literally just to help the the ESL guy like have context for whether something would make a good clip montage it's a very like just we need someone with knowledge to say like hey oh that guy died to a green dragon that was funny have that for the yeah. right you know because that was that was funny that he died that way or blah blah blah. so i'm seeing everyone else like you know trying to deal with the situation and i couldn't do anything i'm just sitting there watching everything oh, and God. it was it wasn't it wasn't fun um, that sounds stressful i just hope that like you know we're aware that these things have happened and the hope is that with the the yearly system it means there is sufficient time to properly uh, develop, test, and even beta test the systems involved. Because I don't think any of the tournaments that were beta tested, you know, by having the players just jump into the Deadman world to try test out the finale, I think they all went well yeah. from memory. But I don't, I can't remember for sure to say that with absolute clarity. Okay. Um, 
DK asks, opinion on third-party clients. Just overall. I mean, Greenlight is a third-party client, right? Yep. And Greenlight is great. Um, I think that the, you know, the owner of Greenlight does does a great job, and he had a good vision when he made it to provide all these extra features to people without a cost. You know, uh, I think I think Greenlight is phenomenal. I think that Greenlight has the unfortunate downside of having its open source is fantastic until people can just copy and modify that open source code yeah. to do other stuff, and that's what's happened, right? And ultimately that has problems in the community i mean the there's all sorts from speedrunners who don't like the fact that npc death animations are can be completely ignored which means that you know they their speed their times are it's like much easier to click the mobs they yep. want and stuff um there's implicate like there was the meme with the guitar hero jads you know yep. <laughs> that resurfaced a little bit with triple with uh the six jad challenge yeah and um, people talking about that i mean i don't know what the player wants from me i don't like them I mean, if I could, if I could make all the malicious third-party clients go with a snap of my fingers, I would. You know, I don't think that should be a surprise to anyone. Um, but I do think that, I do think that the ones like that are run by the community and done well, like Greenlight, um, only help elevate the player's experience yeah. in a way that I wish our base client did. I agree. I think God, I, I couldn't play this. PR answering these. I couldn't play this game without <laughs> Runelight. It's like actually at that point where I, I couldn't play vanilla. It would just be a painful experience. For sure. I mean, I, I, I said this, I think when I did the, the top, we did a trio top, me, uh, Arcane and Elena um, did a trio top on stream, uh, like for the Steam launch stuff, oh, yeah, yeah. all the top achievements. And I think the biggest thing that I said was the most annoying was just not being able to see like, like I said, the NPC's hull, you know, the, the yeah. you're marking the NPC. Yeah, so many little things that just. Yeah, and I mean, you, you oh, don't even re you don't even remember. Like I just I just know whenever Runelight can update, then everything starts coming into my mind. Like oh, it's not just GPU, it's not just menu entry swap. It's like there's like a million different things at this point, which is elevate my gameplay, as you say. You know what the biggest thing that yeah. I think goes so underrated that people just absolutely hate that when it's not there. Item. Ground items. Yep, ground items. I was about to say. I, I don't know if anyone's played. Tried to do a necreal task on mobile, and trying to figure out. <laughs> which and trying seed? to figure out which seeds you're picking oh, up. God. You know, you're 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 holding on the screen, and you're like, oh, that's not the right tile. Hold over here. Oh no, that's the pile I had last time. Hold over here. Oh no, that one's an irrit and a taramin. Oh, oh maybe, god. God. After, after four presses, I might as well just pick up the irrit. You know. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> uh, it's like Zora. I did I did a few. I never play on mobile, but I did a few mobile Zora kills. I just remember like you see the drop. You're like, what did I just get? I can't like I can't even see what I just got. And you got to open like your chat box up and be like, oh, this is what I got. Accidentally click the teleport scroll to leave. You know. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. Now, uh, I think it's good, but yeah, there's just so much where it's like, would you rather not have anything or have, you know, have to deal with cheating clients and stuff? Cause you, it's either you ban them all or you just, it's, it's just, it's just tough. Cause there are bannable like plugins, but it's hard to moderate all that. But I think we're in a good position where for the most part, action is taken against people that cheat. If it's able to be found out and rune light is in a really good position where everybody can access it it's not like behind some paywall where only limited players get it i think it's just in a really good spot one of the other downsides of rune light though is if you google search rune light you can actually hit dodgy links which is annoying oh yeah um, you know people like like i think it's rune it is runelight.net that's the real one isn't it yep uh the so like you i know, think the dot com one like just blocks it on my browser like doesn't even let me reach yeah, it unless but, i like yeah so yeah it is it's not the most ideal thing and it, it became even more apparent right with the the steam client you know people yeah. were like oh steam client's great get uncapped fps but i still need my rune light you know yeah <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah okay um i have yeah go i ahead. have like 10 more minutes tops so yeah no got any I, burning questions I, I was just about to say we <laughs> can't pass the four hour mark because of my hosting services uh 
uh, limits on like how, how how big the file can be. So four hours is absolute max. So we'll we'll wrap it up. Um, but Husky, absolute pleasure having you on. Uh, if there's any final things that you would like to say, um, or any final sort of topic or anything that you'd like to touch on, we can. But is there anything? Because if not, we'll just wrap it up. No, just um, it's been a pleasure for having me. Um, I'm excited as always to see what the players think of upcoming things that we, we talk about in blogs. I think I know it's frustrating for a lot of people, you know, wanting raids three, but. I honestly believe that this is going to be one of the biggest years in terms of the quantity and quality of updates, even if not all of those are updates that specific player groups themselves want, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, I think Below Ice Mountain is super high quality. I think, that, um, I think it, sh it goes to, like, even just looking at the Kingdom Divided, we did a playthrough today, it's phenomenal. So yeah, just hopefully stick with us, uh, players. Um, hopefully, you know, we get the content updates that maybe specific people are looking forward to soon and you know there's some blogs coming up you know combat achievements will be around the corner erb is gonna be a contentious discussion as well but yeah. hopefully players you know give good feedback and stay civil and then you know moving on to hopefully bigger and better things and the dead man i spoke about you know I'd, I'd hope i don't know when that would be player facing i don't know if it's gonna be this year but i really hope so you know so well awesome yeah, thank, just... thank you so much for being on i was very pleased that you were just so willing to be on it and i know a lot of people have been looking forward to this having just another J Mod on giving their <laughs> thoughts and stuff so it was an it was, i had a ton of fun i ho i hope you had some fun discussing these things i know you're on the q a's a lot but um yeah i guess we'll wrap it up here thank you guys for all listening uh in the description i will have husky's twitter is there any other links that you'd like me to have in the description husky uh no no just my twitter that's the only Perfect. place you can find me uh, sorry if i can't unban your account or any <laughs> other account security questions you send my way but if you have any content related questions i generally try my best at... sorry if i miss some when it's busy week times or a weekend but i generally do try awesome well thank you so much we'll end it up here and thank you guys for listening and next week we are going to have a special guest so or, or i guess the special guest is like, there's always a special guest every week but thank you guys and we'll see you in the next one take it easy see ya